Bowling Green looking to stay hot here in Columbus as the Falcons have traveled down south about two hours to Nick Swisher Field in Bill Davis Stadium to take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Joined by my broadcast partner here today, Chaz McNeil. I'm Tyler Cavalitz, and Chaz, we got a fun game set up for ourselves. I, I, you're 100% right. We've got a little bit of a matchup here. You've got the Ohio State Buckeyes versus the Bowling Green State University Falcons, a little battle of Ohio, if you will. And this is a rivalry that kind of happens. It's a big rivalry in hockey. You get to the baseball field, it diminishes a little bit. But these teams play a lot. They played last year. They've played several times throughout the past decade. And with the Buckeyes, the Buckeyes have... I believe they've won, of the 55 matchups, they've won about 32 of those games. So they're 8-2 and two in the last 10 years. The Buckeyes kind of have a little bit of a grasp on this series, if you will. But the, Buckeye, the Falcons are looking to take one away, which would be the first time since 2011. So we've got a matchup here today, Tyler. Yeah, like you said, they've played each other 55 times this series, dating back to 1951. And Ohio State does lead that series 32-19, and they've tied four times. Ohio State beat the Falcons at Bill Davis Stadium last year, 8-2. And like you said, they've pretty much consistently dominated this series. It's been one side of the past decade or so. Bowling Green's last win coming on April 20th, 2011, when they snuck out of Columbus with a 5-4 to four victory. But looking at these teams a little bit, we'll go on a Bowling Green side first. I mean, this Falcons team is just going on all cylinders right now. They are currently on a four-game winning streak. If you count Oakland, which has not finished yet, it is suspended due to weather. They are trailing technically 18-17 to 17 that game in the 7th. It'll stay that way until May 1st. Uh, but you look at this Falcons team, Chaz, they're dominating in conference right now. They're 12-0 and 0 in MAC play, the best run in conference play they've ever been on, let alone start. They stand atop the Mid-American Conference standings, 15-10 and 10 overall. What has impressed you with this Bowling Green team so far into the season, about halfway there? Well, uh, let's be frank, Tyler. Offense has been explosive. You look at this team, they will let some runs up on them. Pitching has been a little bit of a struggle for them. But you look at their batting order, you look at Nathan Archer, he's already at nine home runs. This this is an absolutely unreal run by him. You also look at just the team as a whole. There was a, a game just a couple weeks ago, if you guys, if you BGSU baseball fans, 34 runs were scored in one game. That Oakland, and that's still the most out of any team in the country. That's right. In a single game this season, and that Oakland game you were talking about, Falcons has se they have 17 runs in that game right now. That game is currently postponed. It will be resumed later on in the year. But 17 runs in one game, nothing to sniff at. This Falcons team is unreal when it comes to putting a batter over the plate. So they are. They do have a winning record on the road. They're 12 in 10 this season however they're just three and ten against non-conference opponents on the road those wins were middle tennessee in the third game of that series they won seven to three won the opener against memphis nine to one and they also beat xavier in the closing of that series on march 30th eight to four so when you look at this falcons team a little deeper though there's a few key things that you see that lead to the success of this team first the scoring first they're 12 and three when they do that. They're also undefeated, nine and zero when they allow under five runs. When they're out hit by opponents, they have not won a game this season. They're 0 and eight, and they've been good at holding a lead. 14 and two, 12 and two, 12 and two, 13 and two when leading after the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth innings, respectively. And they haven't been the best at comebacks. 0 and seven when trailing after the eighth inning, but. I, I mean, that offense you talked about, Chance, has been dominant, but the pitching has been talked about a lot. It's, it has not been the best. Like you said, a 7.03 ERA that's middle of the pack in the MAC. They've given up 193 runs and 165 earned runs, the second and third most in the conference. But interestingly, it's not as bad as it has been in conference play. It's actually the fourth best ERA in conference play when you look at those numbers. So. What are going to be the keys for our starter, Rigo Ramos? We'll get into him a little bit later. But what are going to be the keys for this pitching staff to handle this Big Ten offense? Well, for, for Ramos, you get a little bit of a break. Now, that's relative. Now, this 
this Ohio State team is bottom three in the Big Ten in batting. They're not the best team in their conference, but it, we talked about this a little bit off air. It's still Big Ten play. Your opponents are still very skilled, very talented, recruited at a high level, young age, all of that stuff. So they've got a little bit of a development step up there. For Ramos, didn't have his, his past couple of games have not been the best. He he had a little bit of a bounce back against Xavier, but on a Sunday game against Akron, things just looked a little bad out of sorts. He, only, he was the starter in that game and only ended up pitching, I believe, 1.2 innings. And with that situation, it hasn't been that far removed in the season where that taste might not be out of his mouth. Now you're facing a little bit of a softer batting team, so maybe he can get a little bit of a rhythm going. But that's the thing about pitchers. That's the thing about this team as well is with relief and how the relief's going to come in. This Falcons team has struggled with relief. They've struggled with getting consistent outputs out of their relief pitchers. And when you're starting Ramos, who in some cases can be a Sunday starter, he can be a relief guy, he kind of goes all over. You got to get him consistency. And if you can't do that, hope that one of your relief pitchers can step up early and stop what bleeding, what damage the Buckeyes can cause. So now we'll look over at Ohio State, the 1966 NCAA Tournament Champions, looking to someday get back to that College World Series. They haven't been back there since 1967. This season, they're 13 and 14 overall, three and three in the Big Ten. Early on in their conference play, they sit tied sixth in the in the Big Ten. They are just two and four at home, so have not played much at Bill Davis Stadium so far this season. And they're coming off a three-game series against Nebraska, nationally ranked Nebraska, probably the best team in the Big Ten, if not one of the top two or three. And they lost the first two, oh, uh, uh, 3 and 3-7. They did win on Sunday, 9-3. to But overall in that series, batted just 179, struck out 30 times, walked just seven. And overall, this offense has struggled to 258, 373, 407 slash line as a team are the Buckeyes. So looking overall at this team, what are some strengths and weaknesses that you see out of these Ohio State Buckeyes? Well, we touched on it a little bit before. That offense is sluggish, to say the least. That is an issue they struggle with. They did rattle off nine, win, or nine runs against a 23rd ranked in the country, Nebraska. That's, that's a high number of runs. That's a good amount of scoring. But that output was not consistent. Those other two games, they scored zero. They scored three. If, if, you, want, if you want even more on that, they had a game where they lost 2-5 to five against West Virginia. In the next two games, they scored 7-26. and 26. So that's definitely a key point that they haven't been as consistent. But what are you when you're looking at them, what are some of the strengths that you see? Well, they pitch pretty well. They're towards the upper echelon of pitchers in the Big Ten. And they, I believe they have about an ERA in, in the twos. They, yeah, they have an ERA in the fives. I, I, was, I was talking batting average, but their ERA is in the five. It's kind of unreal when you look at this, this team where, yeah, their offense struggles a little bit. They have put up 26. They have put up some bigger games. They put up 13 earlier on in the season, 13 multiple times. But then the games they win, they manage to shut down opponents pretty well. And against Nebraska, they only allowed three runs in that win. There's a, there's a couple outliers, but still, this, this team can pitch pretty well. They can pitch with the best of them, and it's really just unstoppable force meets a movable object. you got a better pitching team in the Big Ten with uh, Ohio State, but an explosive offense with the Buckeyes. So the way that's going to crash is, clash is going to be really interesting to see unfold. And you did mention that pitching. They held Nebraska. They had a 4-6 ERA against Nebraska. That might not sound like the best number, but against a team like the Cornhuskers, it's not bad at all. Allowed just 13 runs over 25 innings. Struck out 25 compared to nine walks. So we do have the national anthem coming up in just a couple moments. So we'll take a step back. Be back with you in a couple of minutes. Talk more about the Falcons and the Buckeyes. Look at some key players for both teams. And then get the first pitch here at Nick Swisher Field and Bill Davis Stadium. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Don't go anywhere. 
A few years ago, Steve Faircow's lungs were failing. I don't think I had more than a couple weeks to live. That's when Steve received a lung transplant made possible by an organ donor. Now Steve can do things he never imagined, like climbing 94 floors to the top of a skyscraper. I never knew that breathing could feel this good. It's an incredible gift. What could you make possible as an organ, eye, and tissue donor? Leave behind the gift of life. Go to organdonor.gov, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. My name is Jim. I'm a veteran, and I lost both legs in Vietnam. My victory was proving that a disability is not a limitation. I'm Julius. I'm a veteran. My victory was going from homeless to home. At DAV, we're on a mission, helping veterans of all generations get the benefits they've earned. I'm Cece. My victory was finishing my education. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. BGSU Women's Basketball's Lauren Prohaska, the program's all-time leading scorer, set the program record for points scored in a game with 43 points on February 15, 2009 against Central Michigan. This has been History in Falcon Athletics. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Back here at Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Bowling Green set to take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Here, nice day for baseball overcast. Not terrible weather, though, compared to what we've had recently. And, Chaz, we're looking through some key players right now. On Bowling Green side, when you look at that, we'll get into the starting lineup and the pitchers in just a moment. But we were talking about Nathan Archer a little bit pregame. We touched on him. This run that he's been on recently, he's been on a tear, to say the least. That's right. Archer has had an absolutely unreal couple of games. He had his third double home run game of the year against NIU uh, just a couple days ago on Saturday. And, I mean, you look at him, he, he's just been really consistent. .678 slugging percentage, four point, point .402 on base percentage, nine home runs. He's, he leads the team in home runs. And this, this, this guy can do it all. And he, he has one mistake so year th so far this year fielding, but he's also a weapon at center field. You, uh, I know me and you have been heavily involved in uh, the team recently, and you hear some of the words from head coach Kyle Halleck, and he says, this guy's a pro. This guy's a pro who's playing for the Falcons. And you hear that, and it kind of makes you excited. You see the consistency. You see that level of just – straightforward play that he delivers and you see that at on base you see that the way he just carries himself this guy is an absolute stud and that's why he bats lead off that's why he just is kind of at the forefront of this team and when we look at ohio state there's a few guys that we can look at but my eyes initially go to matthew gravelin he is in a sophomore for this buckeyes team but he has been arguably their best hitter so far this season. Kind of hard to argue against that. What has he been doing early I mean, on? We, talk, we talked about how their offense has been stagnant, but he's led in a lot of those stats. He's first in home runs. He's got three. He's, his, he's got 13 RBIs on the year with 22 runs. That's second on the team. Best slugging percentage with a .505. This guy is the leadoff batter. He's played in 27 games, started in 26. He's, a, he's, he's sort of that go-to guy for the Buckeyes. And we've said it before, you got to get that consistency. You say that in every single game. That's, that's how you succeed. But you have to have that go-to guy. And for the, for the Buckeyes, that is Graveline. And so when we look at Bowling Green's starting lineup, 
their batting order here today. There's a few differences in it, but for the most part, it's going to be very similar to what we've seen all year. Nathan Archer in center field will lead off. Sam Seidel, he'll be over at short. He'll be batting second. DJ Newman, he will be our designated hitter for Bowling Green. He'll bat third. Batting cleanup will be Jack Krause. He'll be in right field. Layden Banjoff will be batting fifth. He will be over in left. TJ Tackett, the first baseman, will bat sixth. Tyler Ross over at second will bat seventh. Uh, Landon Roki in the starting lineup. He will slide over at third base. And then Cooper McKenzie will be in the backstop. He'll be behind home plate as the catcher. And for Ohio State, they will be rolling out for this one. Chase Harrell, right-hander, freshman, 6'2", 195 from Milford, Ohio. And looking at him, can you give us a little report on Ohio State starting pitcher Chase Harrell? Yeah, Chase Harrell, you look at his stats, he's, they're, they're bringing him out. He was, uh, he is only going to be, let me look here, he, in, against Nebraska, he had two innings pitch, he didn't allow a single run, he had two strikeouts, he had a walk, but overall, this guy is actually pretty good, 5.74 ERA, he's got 12 runs allowed on the year, with 10, er, 10 of those being earned runs. Five doubles, but he hasn't allowed a single home run yet, and we know that this Falcons team likes to hit home runs. They love to hit home they runs. Love, love might even be an understatement for this team. But top 30 offense, but that's besides the point. And he's got a total of 15.2 innings pitched, and he's this, this is a guy you want to bring out in a one-game series, hope he gets a little bit of a hot start and can kind of shut down this Falcons offense. Yeah, so Harrell will be out on the mound. It will be Harrell and Gravelin as the battery for Ohio State. Harrell holds the Milford High School records for single season and career strikeouts. So even though he only he has 12 and 15 and two-thirds innings pitched, he's proven in the past he can be a strikeout guy. Hasn't transitioned so far this season at the D1 level in the Big Ten but we'll see what he can do here. So when we look at those batting orders and the pitcher for Ohio State, once again, of course, Rigo Ramos will be on the opposing mound. We'll get to him in the bottom of the first. But what are going to be your final keys to the game for each of these teams if they want to come out with a win? Well, you said it before. The Falcons win a lot more games when they hold the lead going late into the game. So, you know, maybe don't catch yourself up with scoring extremely early. Don't, you know, force big plays or anything like that. Don't make the innings go fast. Play the game at your own pace. We know this Falcons team has an explosive offense, but maybe you want to tire out the pitcher a little bit if you're the Falcons. Now, if you're Ohio State, you're right. Not not so much of a strikeout guy they got on the mound right now, but it's just you got to get in rhythm early. And there's our first pitch of the game in there, a strike. Nathan Archer swinging 6-0-3. First pitch, 66 degrees here in Columbus, Ohio. Do have 12-mile-per-hour winds kind of blowing out towards left center field. This one's going to be popped up. Moving over will be Kazmar, the shortstop. He'll set around, settle under it for the first out. So two pitches, one out for Ohio State. Now, that's not what you want to see first for the Falcons. Archer's your big heavy hitter to open up the game, and obviously that's the point of batting orders. You've got different guys that do different things throughout, but to lose Archer so early on as your first out kind of quickly in the game takes a little bit of a momentum, like just very quickly. So Sam Seidel will step into the box. Seidel, the lefty, looks at a strike. In the past three games, Seidel with a batting average of .277, and he had five runs scored against NIU. And he'll look at another one in there, down in the count early 0-2. Seidel has been an on-base machine, reached base in all 24 games he's played this season. If you go back to last season, he has reached base in 35 straight contests. So Harold comes set, the 0-2 delivery, this one lined over, but then with the shift on, That'll actually be Pedarini. Actually, I believe that was Kazmar. I think Pedarini moved over on the other side of second base. So you had your third baseman playing kind of like a shading second baseman. Kazmar did not have the move at all. Stood still. Caught the lineup. 
for the second out of the top of the first. So DJ Newman, the two-way star, will step into the box. Newman looks at a strike as Harold pounding the strike zone early on. Newman's done it all for the Falcons so far this season. He's been solid on the mound, and he's been very productive at the plate as he fouls this one off to the right side. Dimensions here at Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium. It's 3.30 down the lines. It'll be 370 down each of the alleys and 400 out to center field. So the 0-2 count on Newman. Harold comes set. This one misses up high. Rare ball in this top of the first. 1-2 the count. Newman, the top. In a bunch of those leaderboards in the MAC, atop the triples category. Tied for first in that. He's fourth in runs, sixth in slugging, and in the top ten for OPS batting average, RBI, and home runs as he looked at a ball outside there. So the count is even now at two and two. Harrell working from the stretch will come set. This one misses high also. So three, two, full count on DJ Newman. Falcons trying to get their first base runner of the contest. Newman broke onto the scene last year with as MAC Freshman Pitcher of the Year in 2023, and he even got a MAC Pitcher of the Week this year. And he'll foul this off, and he, not only was he just MAC Pitcher of the Week, he also made first team All-MAC as a designated hitter. So he's a guy that dominates on both sides of the ball. He'll foul this one off, so still alive here, three and two. Harold delivers this one going to be fouled off once again so Newman doing a really good job of staying alive fouling off what he can just waiting for that pitch and we were talking about this earlier Tyler it's really nice that the Falcons have a true two-way player a real weapon to work on both sides of the ball and just you know if you can't get a spark on one side you got a spark on the other so Harold the 3-2 pitch once again this one will be up high so the Falcons have their first base runner of the game DJ Newman draws a walk on a long at-bat. Now that's not exactly ideal for the Buckeyes who looked like they were about to get a quick one, two, three. You had two outs, two strikes. It looked like everything was looking your way. And now you've got a pretty good runner on base. And Jack Krause will step into the plate with that runner on first. Newman on first. Krause looks at a ball. Krause was named MAC Player of the Week back on March 18th. Fifth year here at Bowling Green for the senior outfielder from Brighton, Michigan. Krause looks at a fastball on the outside here, and he's displayed pop recently. Krause, a home run in three of the past four games. And he did have a hitting streak come to an end recently. It kind of Small one, the second game on Saturday of that doubleheader ended a five-game hitting streak as a throw over to first Newman back in diving. But Krause is another one of those guys that you've just seen so much improvement this season. Batting 365 right now, which leads the team. Last season, he only batted 153. As he'll take a big cut of the fastball here. Cut through that. Count goes to one and two. And Krause is one of those guys that this max streak we're talking about, this 12-0 max streak, might not exist if he doesn't get that massive home run in game one against NIU on Friday that put the team ahead and managed to get them to the end of that game on a perfect streak. There's another throw over here to first, but Newman back in safely. This is also something to note. Kraus leads the team in walks with 18. So maybe a little bit of a size issue that kind of causes the ball to wrap around him a little bit, get him favorable strike zones. So the pitch here by Harrell, another cut by Jack Krause, comes up with nothing, so he'll go down swinging. Falcons get a base runner, can't do much more. Ohio State will come up in the bottom of the first when we come back. Tied 0-0 here going into the bottom of the first. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball on Falcon Radio.
Senior forward Rashawn Agee has had a breakout year as one of the leaders of the Bowling Green men's basketball team. Agee is playing in his second year as a member of the Falcons after transferring from Casper College, where he averaged over 20 points per game and earned a first-team all-conference and NJCAA Division I All-American nomination. This year, AG has put up outstanding numbers, averaging 12 points and 9 rebounds per game while shooting almost 60% from the field, earning himself a Matt Pro Player of the Week award. The physicality and energy that AG brings to the floor every game is what makes him such an impactful player, part of what makes him and Jason Spurgeon one of the best front court duos in the match. This has been 60 Seconds in Falcon Athletics on 88.1 FM WBGU, Northwest Ohio's Community Radio Station. Back here at Bill Davis Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Great facility here down in Columbus, state of the art. So Bowling Green got a base runner in the top of the first. DJ Newman drawing a walk. Jack Krell striking out there to end it, unable to do any damage. So it will be Ohio State's turn to try to get something going. Their starting batting order will be Trey Lipsy, the junior outfielder. He will lead off, and he'll be in left field. Henry Kazmar will be the shortstop. He'll bat second. Matthew Gravelin, he will be the catcher. He'll be in right field, or he'll be the catcher batting third. Over at third base will be Tyler Pedrini batting cleanup. Joseph, Joseph Merchant will be batting fifth over at second base. Mitchell Okuli will be in right field. Batting sixth as the first pitch to Lipsy is up high by Rigo Ramos. 1-0 the count. Nick Jamarusni will be the designated hitter to batting seventh. Hank Thomas over at first to batting eighth. And Josh Stevenson rounding the order. Batting ninth in center field. Another ball here by Ramos to start the count. And looking at Bowling Green's starter, Rigo Ramos, this is his fifth season at Bowling Green, although he did not play in 2022 due to injury. It's his fourth season playing as he fires in a fastball there. Four strike, 2-1 the count. Ramos, a uh, lefty out of Archbold, Ohio. This will be his eighth appearance of the season and fifth start as this one drilled out to center field. Archer moving to his right for it. He'll make the catch as Archer and Banjoff were tracking it down. Like we mentioned, Nathan Archer just so good at in center field and tracks that one down. And so Henry Kazmar will step into the batter's box. And you're right, like we said before, with Nathan Archer, it's another, just another Gray Halleck quote that he said just a couple of days ago. The, it seems like the only ones that Archer can't get are the ones that go over the fence. It and really does seem like that at times. I mean, he's just so good at tracking. And to have a guy like that reliably all the time as he gets another one it's just it's really amazing for this Falcons team just to have one of those guys that you can lean on in moments where you know you you kind of need something a little bit more desperately than usual you know what I mean like you mentioned Henry Kazmar flying out to center field that time Archer had to go to his left no problem for him makes it look easy so Matthew Gravelin will step into the batter's box Ramos trying to work fast here off speed, can't catch the zone, but Rigo Ramos last season started eight games. This will be his fifth start this season. He has started four of the past five Sundays. He will be starting here today, of course, not a Sunday. And Ramos, the 1-1 one -one delivery, this one inside. So there's been kind of a rotation for that Sunday starter spot. It was Calvin Mitchell to start the season, then Rigo Ramos. Now it's been Landon Willman as of recently, so we'll see if that sticks that way. But Ramos, the past four games, he's kind of struggled. A 7-3 ERA, allowed 10 runs in 12 and a third innings pitched. 15 strikeouts, but 17 walks. So he's had those control issues on the season as a whole, a nine ERA with 21 walks and 21 strikeouts, those walks the most on the team. And that's right, and we, we mentioned before, it's something that they've been looking for. They've been looking for a solid go-to reliever that, you know, like you said, it's not a Sunday, it's a Tuesday, kind of a lower, 
every single game is important but you know mac play is really truly where it counts so in this they're testing a couple matchups we saw that with a little bit of a catcher change and stuff like that so trying to see if you can get ramos back into that reliever spot that he was at is i mean you can see some of the strategy coming out here and as uh, after a stop for some equipment ramos gets an off speed in there so two two pitch the pitch by Rigo, a little up and outside. So count goes full for Matthew Gravelin. As Gravelin has speed if he can get on a base, but he will not be able to. Swings through a high fastball there. So Rigo Ramos sets him down. One, two, three. Two flyouts to Nathan Archer, and then a strikeout to end the first. Tied, nothing, nothing. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Crusty Crab? No, this is Falcon Radio. Is this the Crusty Crab? No, this is Falcon Radio. Is this the Crusty Crab? No, this is Falcon Radio 88.1 WBGU HD2 Bowling Green, Ohio. Sweet strawberry icing. You're in goodwill and just past that vintage denim jacket you spot. Miniature donut earrings. You lean in. Ah, that's the scent of shopping success. Because at Goodwill, every item you buy funds local job training and more. So bring home those donut earrings and bring home so much good to your community. Goodwill, bring good home. Brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. Bands off, Tackett's Ross, the next three up for Bowling Green here in the top of the second, that first ending scoreless. Bowling Green got a runner on in the form of DJ Newman before having that inning end on a swing and strike out by Krause. And on the other side, Ohio State, they ended up going down 1-2-3. That also ending on a uh, inning ending swing strike out by Gravelin. So some parody right there. And, and that's what you like to see from the Falcons. You know, both sides, honestly, if you're a fan of either team, you're excited with what you saw a little bit. Yeah, the offenses didn't get up to what you might expect, but you're in the first inning. You're kind of trying to set a tone a little bit. And for if you're a Buckeye fan, you look at this and you say, well, this is a great offense that just got stopped basically one, two, take a, t- take a breath, three. And then if you're a Falcons fan, you say, Rigo Ramos, who you might have – been a little bit uncertain about just honestly had a pretty solid showing just now so Leighton Banjoff in to bat looks at a first pitch ball Banjoff this season batting 275 he has drawn 18 walks which leads the team five walks in fact in the past three games he's played as Banjoff will look at a fastball up high here so 2-0 the count early and we were talking about this Falcons offense, but just to describe to you how how good this offense has been early on this season as Banjoff will look at a strike in there, 2-1 the count. The Falcons are averaging 9.6 runs scored per game. Not only does that lead the Mac, that is sixth in the entire country so far this season. As the 2-1 pitch to Banjoff, this one outside. Gravelin tried to frame it there, couldn't get the call. So we mentioned Banjoff, very good at drawing walks so far this season, looking to draw another one, get a base runner on to start the top of the second for the Falcons. This one will be popped up. It will carry out a play just to the left of us. So a full count now. And Banjoff might be getting a little bit of revenge for his old team. He, if, if for those of you who didn't know, he actually transferred into BGSU from Nebraska. Uh, and the last game that the Buckeyes just played was a win against Nebraska. So, you know, maybe there might be a little bit of something there, but you never know. And he'll swing through a fastball here. So, Leighton Banjoff goes down swinging to start the top of the second for the Falcons. Mark that as two straight swinging strikeouts for Chase Harrell. T.J. Tackett will be the next man up, the left-hander. From Perrysburg, Ohio, a freshman, 
Six foot five Tackett stands. He'll foul this one off. And you can tell the Falcons are trying to start something here. They're not going down looking. They're going down swinging, and they're just trying to take a chunk out of the ball, maybe get a little bit of a spark early on in this matchup because, like I said before, the offense of the Buckeyes is just a little bit slower than the Falcons, at least on paper. Tackett's will look at an off-speed left up high here by Harrell. 1-1 one, one to count. Tackett's has kind of solidified his starting role recently. He started nine of the past 11 games. He himself has an on-base streak going as he looks at a fastball there. Four strike two. Tackett's has reached space in 15 straight. Looking to continue that here today. Chase Harrell ahead of the count. One, two. Harrell's had control issues of his own. He's walked a batter in all but one appearance this season. That already continued as he walked Newman in the top of the first. Fastball up high here again. So 2-2 two, two the count. Tackett's also two doubles on the year, and one of those actually came on Saturday. So a little bit of growth we're seeing from him, from the young player. And he'll ground this one up the middle. That'll get through the hole to the outfield grass. Second base runner of the game for the Falcons. Their first hit, T.J. Tackett's a single up the middle. Split Kazmar and Mershon. So Tyler Ross will step up to the plate with one out and one on. That was a nice hard hop shot by ta uh, by Tackett's that managed to get over the head of uh, that uh, Buckeye defenseman. What a good shot. And, you know, you a little bit of luck involved, but you got to expect that when you're playing the good sport of baseball. So Tyler Ross will step into the plate. Ross, the second baseman, a senior infielder from Lewis Center, Ohio. Ross is actually tallying two MAC Player of the Weeks this season, March 18th and March 25th. Back-to-back -back weeks there. As a throw over to Banjoff at first. Banjoff back in diving. Leighton Banjoff, four stolen bases this season on four attempts, so he does have a little bit of speed over there at first. Fastball in for a strike. The start, the count for Tyler Ross. Ross also kind of on a little bit of a cold streak in 11 at-bats, just had three hits, which wasn't much like him, but he still leads the team in triples, so though his back can get hot when he needs to. Big cut here over the off-speed pitch. Looks like a possible change up there. He threw and took speed off a little bit. 0 oh, to the count. Bands off at first, one out, one on for the Falcons. Tyler Ross down the count, 0-2. Oh, looks at a ball outside here. One and two the count. And Ross has really displayed power this season compared to last. Had four home runs last season. He's already at five this season. And he's second in the MAC in slugging. Currently slugging 705 in 20 games. He has also reached base every game this year. So. 21 straight if you go back to the end of last year. This one grounded up the middle. Harrell will go to second over to first. They'll get the runner at second. Banjoff will be out, but Tyler Ross beats the throw over at first. And just like that, that's another base reached for Ross, extending the streak that you were just mentioning. So that's that's something to keep an eye out for, another game going on. just, And that's the, the thing with this Falcons team is they've got a good amount of streaks going. They've They've done a lot consistently at well offensively that stuff like this can continue going. So that'll go down as a fielder's choice there. Ross over at first. Here's a ball to start the at-bat to Landon Roki. Roki played last season at Lamar. Actually played his first two seasons before that at Angelina Junior College. Has another throw over here. Back in safely is Tyler Ross. Roki played 12 games at Lamar last season, starting two. This will be his seventh game and third start for the Falcons here this season as he looks at another ball, 2-0 the count. Roki, four for, four for 12 at the plate, started at third in the second game on Sunday, so his second straight game started here for the Falcons as he fouls this one off. Okay. 
Sunday was actually his first multi-hit game of the season, that second game of the doubleheader against Northern Illinois. Another throw over here, and safely is Tyler Ross. And Tyler, we talked about how this team loves to hit home runs. Roki, who has not, has not seen much action whatsoever, has a home run on the year. Another throw over, but Ross back in diving, paying close attention to the second baseman standing on first. Tyler Ross with three stolen bases on five attempts this season. Not a crazy lead over as he kind of deeks going to second there. Big cut by Roki on the high fastball. 2-2 the count. And you talked about those extra base hits. Harrell's actually been very good at limiting that. He has not allowed an extra base hit in the past four appearances. Last time he did was a double on March 17th at West Virginia as Harrell will throw over it once again to first, but Tyler Ross back in diving once again. And interesting, Ross not even taking that big of a lead on first. As he'll go on this pitch, this one going to be swung out to left field. Going out is Kazmar coming in as Lipsy. Lipsy, the left fielder, will call him off, make the catch to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the second, still tied. Nothing, nothing. You're listening to Bowling Green Falcons Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting, a Teenager, Learning the Lingo. Jelly, jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous, as in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org, brought to you by the US Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Hey. Oh, d hey, Deb. I thought you were the radon test guys. The who test guys? Didn't you see the paper Sunday? The Surgeon General issued another lung cancer warning. Oh, like the cigarette warning? Yeah. They're saying we have to get our houses tested for radon. I don't smell any radon in my house. Oh, that's because radon is an odorless, colorless, tasteless gas that seeps into your house from underground. Does this story have a happy ending? Yeah. You'll be a lot happier once you get your house tested. Penery, Mershon, and Oakley. The next three up to bat for Ohio State here in the bottom of the second. Buckeyes went down one, two, three. Rigo Ramos setting them down in order in the bottom of the first. Ramos back out there to start the second. And what do you see from Ramos that made him so successful in that bottom of the first? Well, you look at what Ramos did, and it wasn't like he was tricking the batters or messing with them or having any crazy pitches. These were just hard fastballs that were coming at and he the bats were swung there were some hits but you had the one two three was caused off of a pop and a line drive and then a strikeout so you know that kind of situation where he's forcing batters to swing but there the shots are going straight towards the falcons and b both happen to be towards nathan archer in that situation but still just you're forcing Buckeyes to swing is creating these opportunities. And this first pitch to Pedrini is popped up. Coming in it will be Roki from third base. He'll call off Ramos to make the catch. So one pitch, one out for Rigo Ramos here in the bottom of the second. And sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes you don't need that level of finesse. Sometimes you've got a team that, you know, wants to make a statement that it's going to swing. They're going to see something they like, and they will take a swing at it. And this Buckeyes team right now is doing that exact thing. So Joseph Mershon steps in for Ohio State. This one down low, bounces in the turf for the first ball of the up-out. Mershon spent the past four seasons at the College of Charleston. This one high, 2-0. Last year at Charleston, he played in 46 games, starting off 46, batting 279, batting 262 this season. He does lead the team, though, and on base percentage with 441. He's drawn a team high 22 walks. As he'll look at a third ball here, 3 0 the count. This one, though, dotted in by Ramos, 3 and 1. So he was very good with his control in the bottom of the first. Little as he puts this one high and outside, didn't miss by much. So. 
not as strong with the command here in the bottom of the second. Five pitch walk allowed to Joseph Mershon. So he will stand on first. And Mitchell Oakley, the right fielder, will step up to the plate. And what you could attribute that to is a little bit of patience from the Buckeyes. You know, not every single throw that was thrown by Ramos was a strike, but they were still swinging. They still thought they could get a piece of it. And then you saw right there that Buckeye batter just kind of sizing things up and managed to get a good uh, walk out of it. As this one in the dirt, Marshawn thought about going to second. He'll go back to first. He does have speed on the base pass. Eight for ten on stolen base attempts this season. Both of those, the stolen bases and stolen base attempts, lead this Buckeyes team. He is tied for tenth in the Big Ten in stolen bases, but he hasn't attempted one over the past six games. He'll stay put on this pitch. That'll miss on the outside. Not by much. 2-0 the count. So Mershon has not attempted a stolen base in the past six. He last attempted one on March 17th against West Virginia. As Ramos to the plate, this one in there at four strike. So Ramos, that lefty, it is usually tougher to steal off of first against those left-handers because of that pickoff move they can have looking at you the entire time. So we'll see if Mershon stays put or decides to go during this at-bat. 2-1 the count. This one popped up over to the left side. We'll see if it stays in play. Roki going towards it. He'll get towards the dugout and then kind of jump back, make the catch. Not sure if the wind pushed that one back out, but nice adjustment by Landon Roki to come up with the ball. And let me be your eyes here for a second for those listening. What a great reach back. It, it almost seemed like it was going to go into the stands. And then la you see a last-second adjustment by Roki as he whips his arm back, snags the ball. And yeah, it, it seems like the Falcons can get help from every single position right now. So Nick Jamarusti, the designated hitter, stepping up to the plate. Quick pickoff move over to first. Mershon back in. Ramos just stepped off and threw it over that time. Falcons giving the Buckeyes a little taste of their own medicine after what I believe was four pickoff attempts in a row against Tyler Ross just at, just at the top of the second. So Ramos, as he's running here, Ramos, they have him in a pickle, throw over to second, but he's going to get in there safe. So Joseph Mershon was going at the first sign of movement by Rigo Ramos. He threw over to Tackett's at first. Tackett's threw over to Seidel at second. But Mershon did not look back, got a good jump, comes up with a stolen base. So looked like the Falcons may have had him there, but instead Joseph Mershon standing at second base. And that was just a high throw by Tackett's as well that you know allowed for too much of an adjustment and not enough time to kind of swing the ball down and get that out. Yeah. So still Jamarusti at the plate. First pitch to him was a ball, 1-0. Ramos to the plate, this one outside, 2-0. Jamarusti played last season at Central Arizona Community College. He spent the past two seasons before that at San Diego State. As Ramos now, little lefty, delivers the hole, and this one fouled back into the netting, so 2-1 the count. And if you're the Falcons... This is kind of one of those situations where you'd be a little bit on edge. With Ramos, he's, he's, his pitching has been consistent. It has been pretty solid so far to start this game. It's more so just the fact that you have a man threatening now on second, and the, the Buckeyes still are willing to bat and they're willing to swing, so you don't want to go down early here. 2-1 the count. Ramos is delivering this one lined out to left field. Banjoff won't have to move much, though. Catches this one to end the second inning. So Ohio State gets a runner in scoring position. Can't do anything with it. We'll go to the top of the third. Still scoreless here in Columbus. You are listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Don't go anywhere. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school but I 
so can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is the story of Julie Guillot. She's a Leukemia and Lymphoma Society advocate and the mother of a child who battled blood cancer. Zach was diagnosed with AML, a deadly leukemia, when he was only five. He died at just nine years old, really from the treatment that was meant to save him. Today, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is pioneering breakthrough treatments for kids with cancer. Visit LLS.org and save a child's life. Top of the third here at Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium. So, continuing on the tradition that Reese Landon started last year, we will be continuing that trivia question. So, we'll stay here top of the third. We'll wait a second, give you some time to think about it, give you the answer in the top of the fifth. We'll do some uh, history in between that. But the trivia question today, Chaz, is Ohio State alumni. Nick Swisher, he played for the New York Yankees, Oakland Athletics, Cleveland Indians when they were called the Indians, Atlanta Braves, and Chicago White Sox. He hit 245 home runs in his MLB career as this one is popped up by Cooper McKenzie, the catcher for Bowling Green. It's going to be caught by Gravelin, Ohio State's catcher. So that'll be the first out of the inning. And that'll take us back to the top of the order with Nathan Archer, but Getting back to the question, so Nick Swisher, Ohio State alumni, 245 home runs in his MLB career. He, in his prime, he had a streak of hitting 20-plus home runs in consecutive seasons. How many consecutive seasons of 20-plus home run seasons did Nick Swisher have? Was it A, 6, B, 7, C, 8, or D, 9? Once again, the question is how many consecutive seasons of 20-plus home runs did Nick Swisher have? Is it either A, 6, B, 7, C, 8, or D, 9? Try to think about that without looking it up. Give you some time to think about Chaz. We'll give you the answer in the top of the fifth. But back to the action here. Nathan Archer looked like he was trying to bunt on the first pitch. Called for a strike. Swung through the second one. He'll foul this one back. So down to the count, 0-2. Any initial thoughts on that trivia question? Yeah, well, first I want to preface it by saying we've had a couple of practice questions tossed around. Uh, uh, and, you know, every single time we've talked about it, I've gotten it right. The only time we talked about it on air, I got it wrong. So well, I'm going to do a little bit of gymnastics in my brain. I think nine's too much. I think six is too little. Maybe it's something in the middle. But every single thought is probably wrong. So I, I'm not going to give a guess. I'm, I'm going to let the audience think, and I'll figure it out. Nathan Archer grounds this one over to second. Mershon fields it. Throw to first just beats Archer. Archer blazing down that line. They got him by about half a step. So two batters, two outs for Ohio State, top of this third. Sam Seidel will step up to the plate. Like we mentioned, Seidel with that crazy on base streak right now. He lined out too short his first time up. He'll look at a ball inside here to start this at bat. And that's another unfortunate quick out for Archer who we've seen has, has been a very good hitter, but as a whole, this Falcons team just has not been able to get much going so far. They're hitting, but they're just not managing to get on base in time. And this one outside by Harrell. Chase Harrell missing outside, 2-0 the count. Harrell in his last outing on Friday at Nebraska. Went two innings of scoreless baseball. Had two strikeouts and walked a batter. This one down low again. So 3-0 count on Sam Seidel. Looking to continue that on-base streak. Seidel, of course, the brother of teammate Isaiah Seidel. As he'll look at a strike here. And now it, it hasn't also just been getting on base from him. He's been hitting the ball very well, too. 
hit in three straight in 13 of the past 14 as he draws a ball four. So he will continue that on base streak, mark it up to 25 this season. And if you go back to last season, 36 games in a row on base for Sam Seidel. And we, you just mentioned Seidel. I want to talk about Harold for the Buckeyes. And, you know, we're, we're in the third inning. He's had 43 pitches so far and two strikeouts, pretty solid so far. But could that arm be seeing a little bit of wear and tear, a little bit of a breakdown? And you, you, you look at it and you kind of look at the situation and the, if the Falcons kind of take a little bit of patience in sort of like what the Buckeyes did with Rigo Ramos, maybe they'll get a couple bit more balls in their favor instead of trying to swing so hard and so fast. It's definitely a good point. He's not a full starter. He's started and been out of the bullpen both this season. As Nathan Archer, or sorry, DJ Newman, swung through that first pitch. There was a pickoff attempt, by, but Seidel back in time. This one in there first strike. So DJ Newman, who walked his first time up to bat, down in the count 0-2. And Chase Harrell seems to have found that zone once again. Against Newman, it's off his running as Seidel. This one lined out to center field. It's going to be caught to end the inning regardless. So a line out to center field by DJ Newman spells the end of the inning for Bowling Green. We'll go to the bottom of the third, still scoreless here in Columbus, Ohio. You're listening to Bowling Green Falcons Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Roxanne Watson is on a mission to have more people sign up as organ, eye, and tissue donors. What drives her? Roxanne received a heart transplant made possible by an organ donor. I decided that day to devote myself to signing up the most people in the United States. <laughs> That's my goal. Now she's a powerful force for good. What could you make possible as an organ, eye, and tissue donor? Leave behind the gift of life. Go to organdonor.gov. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. The Western Scrub Jay. I was taking my science class on a virtual reality bird watching expedition. All of a sudden, Charlie Kane shouts, arr, arr. He had spotted the elusive black swift, a bird rarely seen in the wild. For a brief moment, Charlie had not the eyes of a nine year old boy, he had the eyes of an eagle. Teachers just have better work stories. Find out how creative teaching can be at teachdfw.org. Brought to you by Teach and the Ad Council. Rio Ramos back on the mound for the Falcons to begin the bottom of the third. It will be the bottom of the order for Ohio State. Hank Thomas, Josh Stevenson, and then back up to the top of the order with Trey Lipsy for the Buckeyes. So Hank Thomas, the first baseman, will step up to bat. Thomas, his third season with the Buckeyes. He played his freshman season at Georgia Tech. Out of high school, a highly recruited player that ranked the number three player in the state of Ohio and the second ranked outfielder in the Buckeye State. Looks at the ball to start this at bat. As an off speed pitch by Ramos will be in there to even it one and one. And we had talked about Nathan Archer. We had mentioned, you know, such a good fielder in the field as this one. It grounded to second, fielded by Ross over the first for the out, but Thomas hasn't committed an error this season over at first on his own, so also a very good fielder. He'll go down on this ground out to Tyler Ross at second to begin the inning. And Tyler, it is really interesting because we've talked about how much success the Falcons have usually in MAC play. They, it seems like they bring their A game, but on the road right now, they, they've only won three of their non-conference games. They're three and ten. So right now, there's no, there's no score. Third inning, bottom of the third, about a third of the way through the game. What do you think the Falcons are going to try to do? I, I think they just continue playing their same game. This is a – you always face higher level competition when you go out of conference play and – they're holding the Buckeyes close. So both teams, just they need to get see something get going. And well, they need to hit a rally as Ramos now 3-0 and behind Stevenson in the count. And 
the batter up to the plate, Josh Stevenson. Actually played the past two seasons at LSU. He won the 2023 College World Series with the Tigers. Transferred over to Ohio State for this season as he'll look at a strike 3-1. He actually scored the game-winning run in the 10th inning of an NCAA regional game against South, uh, Southern Mississippi last season with the Tigers. He'll draw a five-pitch walk here. That will be the second walk allowed by Rigo Ramos. And it will bring up Trey Lipsy, the leadoff hitter for the Buckeyes. And back up to the top of the order, you have Lipsy, who leads the team in home runs. We said this before, 16 RBIs. This guy can score. And with a man on first, you could have a, you have one of your best hitters at the top of this lineup here with a man already on base. This could be a good scoring opportunity for the Buckeyes. They have that runner on first, like you mentioned. And Trey Lipsy, a good guy to be up to bat. Looked at an off-speed pitch there for a strike to start the count. As a pickoff attempt here, picked out of the dirt by Tackett. Trey Lipsy was a 2022 Big Ten All-Freshman team selection. Now in his junior season at Ohio State from Southfield, Michigan. This off-speed gets over the head of McKenzie. That'll go to the backstop. Josh Stevenson will advance the second. That will be scored a wild pitch. And I talked about deterioration before for the Buckeyes with Harold, but with now Ramos, you're seeing a little bit of that. And we saw that in the, in the second a little bit of those pitches that were just a little bit off of the strike zone. And now a little bit off is turning to a little bit more off. And, you know, is it time for Halleck to make that decision? Do I go to another relief pitcher? Do I make that move? No action in the bullpen as of now. This one fouled off to the left side. Count will go to one and two. Ramos, wild pitches, a little bit of an issue last season. 12 wild pitches in 14 games. He's had two wild pitches the past four and one here today at Bill Davis Stadium. So Lipsy still the banner. A lefty, lefty matchup. One, two, the count. Rigo Ramos working from the stretch. Couple looks back to second, delivery to home. Quick delivery there, this one in the dirt, evens the count. It almost looked like Ramos was trying to force a run by Lipsy, trying to force a little bit of movement to get him maybe to go to third, and that pitch wasn't exactly what he was trying to do. But, and it's clear, with one out, you're trying to maybe eliminate the guy on second. This one chopped over the first, but foul. So we'll do it again at two and two. Lipsy getting a little, or Stevenson, my apologies, getting a little bit of a workout there. Jogs back to second. One out here, bottom of the third. Scoreless game still here in Columbus. Pickoff move to second. But Stevenson back in well ahead of the throw. Kind of a spin pickoff move there that time by Ramos. And he showed his arsenal of pickoff moves. He's displayed three or four different moves, keeping the runners on their toes, not going with the same tail every single time. This one going to be grounded to the right side, but fouled once again by Lipsy. And we'll do it again. Trey Lipsy, just 219 batting average coming into this one this season. He is tied for the team lead with three home runs and three triples. And he scored 21 runs. That ranks third on this Buckeyes team. So the 2-2 pitch by Ramos fouled off once again for the third time to the right side. So he, he's just ahead of these pitches by Ramos the past few. So if you're Rigo, are you going to keep slowing it down, or do you think you go with the fastball here, change eye levels? I, I mean, that's a tough question. You go with the fastball, you create the opportunity for maybe a home run shot. We'll see what he decides to do. Rigo working from the stretch, 2-2. Two -two. The wind up, the delivery. This one, he does go with the fastball, but leaves it up high. So the count goes full. 
This could be a swing moment for the Falcons, who with a strikeout here, two outs, a man's kind of stranded on second a little bit. But you get somebody on first and second, this could be a whole completely different game. Good at bat so far by Trey Lipsy. 3-2 delivery. This one driven out to right field. That's going to get down to the wall. Rounding third and coming home will be Stevenson. Going into second with an RBI double will be Trey Lipsy. And just like that, the Buckeyes strike first. And that was just a tough, gritty shot by Lipsy. That was great placement. And that was really in a spot where Kraus couldn't get to it in time. Try as he might, he could not activate whatever super speed he would have needed to get towards that right side of the foul line. And just threading the needle was Lipsy. And now the Buckeyes in a great position. Up, up a run in a slower game with just one out and a man on second. Like you mentioned, just one out. Bottom of the third, Buckeyes now ahead 1-0. Henry Kazmar steps into the batter's box. Another lefty-lefty matchup. Looks at a ball here. So, Rigo, we talked about it. First inning command was really good. Second inning started to wane a little bit. We saw some cracks. This third inning, it definitely has waned quite a bit. Has not been as consistent in peppering that strike zone as the first two. And the runner's going to third. Lipsy dives in. They're going to get him. Ramos looked back at second, realized that he was already too far down the line, turned to third, threw it over to Roki, and they had him in plenty of time. So mistake by Lipsy on the base pass there, and the Falcons get the second out of the inning. And that, that almost could have been disastrous as you see Ramos turn and look. And, and this one grounded the third. It's going to roll just foul before Roki picks it up. But to finish that point, Ramos turned and looked, trying to get a throw off to second, and long gone was Lipsy and managing to get that throw off. So mistake on the base pass for Ohio State. They were set up in a pretty position, one in already, one out in a runner in scoring position. Now it's still a run in, but two outs, and the base is empty for Henry Kazmar. Kazmart flew out to center field his first time at the plate. Looks at a strike here. Count goes to one and two. So Ramos surely looking to get out of this inning with minimal damage. The wind up and the delivery. This one lined out to right field. That'll be in the gap. Archer will round it, pick it up, but going to second with a stand up double is Henry Kazmar. So that's where that mistake on the base pass is so critical. That would have been another run scored for the Buckeyes. Instead, it's a bases empty double for Kazmar. And Gravelin, Matthew Gravelin, the catcher, will step up to the plate with a chance to do some damage for the Buckeyes runner in scoring position with two outs. And that's right, Tyler. That's a massive mistake. You look back on it now where it could be 2 nothing, And you still have the potential two outs. You've still got Gra Gravelin, who is a very good batter, 0.314 batting average, top of the team, but there's still a missed opportunity in the air there. So back-to-back -back extra base hits, two doubles hit by the Buckeyes as Ramos starts another batter off with the ball. That's something he's really struggled with this inning is getting ahead of the Buckeyes. He's been behind in a lot of these counts. Matthew Gravelin looks at another ball here on an off-speed pitch in the dirt. 2-0. Gravelin struck out to end the bottom of the first swinging. Leads the team with a 3-11 batting average. Does have some pop of the bat too. A 5-0-5 slugging percentage also leads the Buckeyes. Big swing of this one. This one fouled off behind us. Actually in front of us behind the netting. Heading kind of out on the terrace roof we'll call it. I wonder if you could hear that boom on the mics. That was a straight shot. Had a sonic boom heard in Bowling Green earlier today. Now that sound of the baseball off some sheet metal above us. 2-1 the count. This one left high, so the count goes to 3-1. So Rigo Ramos behind yet another batter. Ohio State leading 1-0. Bottom of the third here at Nick Switcher Field at Bill Davis Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Runner on second. Matthew Gravelin up with two outs. Ramos from the stretch. 
This one misses down and inside. So second walk of the inning for Ramos and runners on first and second with two outs for Ohio State. And now you're in so uh, just a little bit of a rougher situation. You have Pedarini coming up, third year from at Ohio State, and he's all, he's also a home run hitter. He's tied for first with three, and he's got three doubles, a triple. This is a guy you don't really want to mess with either. And now we've got a little bit of a conversation building on the mound. Kyle Halleck heading out to the mound. We'll see if he decides to make a decision here or if it's just a meeting to go over some things. Rigo Ramos, that guy, he, he's been a guy who's bounced around between the bullpen and starting the past two seasons. Last season, he kind of served as that midweek starter. Warming up in the bullpen for the Falcons is Connor Penrod, it appears. Seems like as of now, Halleck's going to keep Ramos in the game unless he's trying to get more time for Penrod. He will keep him in the game. So Connor Penrod warming up the pen, but Rigo Ramos will get another sh chance to stay in this one. And like we mentioned, Ramos kind of was that midweek guy last last year. 14 games, 8 starts. He started in the bullpen this season. Once Calvin Mitchell started to struggle with a freshman, he was the one who got the next crack at that Sunday spot. Did pretty good for the first few weeks. The past few in that position started to get beat up a little bit, so Kyle Halleck made the decision, move him out of that starting spot for now. And starting here on a Tuesday, got through the first two innings pretty clean. Ohio State's gone to him in this third one. Starts off with a strike to Tyler Pedarini. And Ramos finding, like you said before, finding himself in a little bit of a limbo. He doesn't have just a plug-and-play spot anymore. It's more of when we need him, we'll use him. He's still a great weapon for this Falcons team, but it's just he doesn't have that immediate, oh, he's going to be the weekend guy or he's going to be a guy we want during the midweek. They're still kind of finding a spot for him here. And they have that Friday and Saturday spots batted down with DJ Newman and Nick Good, respectively. It's that Sunday and midweek spots. They've still been messing around with basically a three-man rotation of Mitchell, Ramos, and Willman. This off-speed misses high. So 2-1 the count on Tyler Pedarini. Pedarini popped out to third base his first time up to bat in the second inning. Ahead of the count here, 2-1. Runners on first and second for Ohio State. He'll line this one out to right field. That'll find the gap. Rounding third and scoring is one run. Another one coming around. That will be Kazmar scoring the second run. So two RBI double by Tyler Panarini. Gravelin and Kazmar coming around to score for Ohio State. Bases clearing double. And just like that, the Buckeyes up 3 nothing, Jazz. And you're seeing the Buckeyes pick on Josh Kra Jack Krause a little bit. They're just kind of tackling that right side of the field. And because of that, they're, they're just finding those little holes in on the diamond and getting opportunities. So it will be Connor Penrod coming into the game. So we'll take a quick break, go over Rigo Ramos's kind of the semi-final line does still have a runner out there responsible. And preview, the new Bowling Green pitcher, Connor Penrod. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Don't go anywhere. I'm a wife, a sister, and a grandfather. I'm an office clerk. I'm a research analyst, dance fitness instructor, actor. I'm a copywriter. I'm a veteran. I have lupus, cerebral palsy. I'm blind. And I'm working in a job I love. I love. Because I was given a chance to contribute my skills and talents. To show that my disability is only one part of who I am. Who I am. Who I am. At work, it's what people can do that matters. For more information, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go, fish! 
Sad. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Ringo Ramos' day is done here in Columbus. We'll actually hold off on that final line until the top of the fourth as he still has a runner out there responsible for him. But, Jazz, can you give us a rundown of Bowling Green's new pitcher, number 12, Connor Penrod? That's right, Connor Penrod, a relief guy, but he's a, he's usually a Sunday guy. You bring him in towards the end of a series to kind of close things out. And on the season, he's got a 6.17 ERA. He's pitched about 11.2 innings. So... Not the most experienced guy, but still he's got a good chunk of play in him. He's had 18 hits with eight runs allowed off of those, 11 strikeouts and 11 walks. So completely split there. And this is this is a guy, junior right-hander, he's been here for a second, that he's got a little bit more of experience in him. You, you, you might expect him right now in a time where you're down three, you just got to close out this inning. You've got two outs. You're facing a new batter. Just shut things down right now. Fresh arm. Might be a little bit too fresh, but just shut things down as quick as you can. Joseph Mershon, the batter. First pitch by Penrod. This lined out to left field. But Lady Bandoff not going to have to move much. Couple steps back. He secures that one. So Connor Penrod comes and does the job on one pitch. Gets the out. Ohio State, however, does strike for three. They lead 3 0 going into the top of the fourth. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. At Children International, we know that the journey to end poverty for good begins first with a child. It starts with their first checkup, lesson, opportunity, job. That journey takes commitment from people like you and me to end poverty for good. Learn more at children.org. Here at Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium, we're still going to hold off on that answer to the trivia question until the top of the next inning, but we have reached the top of the fourth. We'll go over a little bit of history in baseball today, and there's quite a bit. We're talking about this, Chaz, quite a bit of history on this day. So, first of all, the first game ever played at Fenway Park took place on April 8th, 1912, or on April 9th, 1912. The Boston Red Sox defeated Harvard University in an exhibition game that was actually played in a snowstorm in Boston. Uh, pretty cool piece of history. Also, Another first game in the historic stadium, Ebbets Field, the home of the Dodgers from 1913 to 1957. They went under a few different names at that time. They were the Brooklyn Superbas at this time. They faced the Philadelphia Phillies in the first game of that stadium's history as the Phillies won 1-0 in 1913. And along with Michael Jordan, made his professional debut at Triple A Birmingham in 94. The first game at in my uh, my opinion, arguably the best stadium in Major League Baseball. PNC Park was played as the Reds beat the Pirates 8-2. And on a more somber note, the Pittsburgh Pirates Hall of Famer, legendary Willie Stargell, also passed away at 61 years old in 2001 uh, when PNC Park opened on April 9th. So some cool pieces of history there that happened on this day throughout the years. Well, all I have to say is if you're a fan of history and you're a fan of Falcon uh, baseball, you're going to hear a lot more of it as we get into how the uh, actual opening days would come and how the seasons in MLB would start. We've got way more history coming down the pipeline. And what I'd even say is if you, if you want to talk about speed, Ricky Henderson, the best speedster in baseball history, he stole his 800th base on an April 9th against the then Cleveland Indians, now the Cleveland Guardians. So historic day in baseball history when you actually look back at it. So Jack Krause at the plate, swing and a miss there for the second strike. So even count two and two. Krause struck out swinging to end the top of the first. Falcons looking to answer to the Buckeyes three spot in the last bottom half of the inning. And it's, it's the fourth inning. We're not in any sense of a desperation time yet, but 
it would f it would be a much lighter game for the Falcons if they were able to get something going with their bats. They haven't really had anything yet, and you have Jack Kraus coming up who had, like I mentioned before, just a tiny little bit of a cold streak, but he still had a big game against NIU, ended up winning that game essentially for the team. So as a whole, it's kind of Jack Kraus right now, full count. What's he going to do? We have a ball that leaked out to foul territory, so we'll take a second to get that. But Kraus had looked at a ball down low to even the, the field count at 3-2, and two, fouled his last one off to the right side. This one going to be popped up to that right side. Mershon will come in. He'll catch that at second. Infield pop fly for the first out of the inning for Bowling Green. And the Falcons just have been popping up shot after shot, not really placing anything where you'd want it to be placed, obviously, but the offense that we talked so highly of just kind of, kind of meeting their match in this pitching for the Buckeyes right now. As now here's a first pitch strike delivered to Leighton Banjoff by Chase Harrell. Harrell been cruising as of late. He hasn't given up a hit since the top of the second. Did walk a batter in the top of the third. Misses outside here. A one and one. Just that one hit allowed by Harrell so far. It was a second inning single by TJ Tackett. Misses down low here. Two and one the count on Leighton Banjoff. Banjoff struck out in the second. His ninth straight game with a strikeout. As check swing here is called a strike. So count will be even at two and two. Harrell working from the stretch, misses outside here to fill the count, three and two. And the Falcons could use a base runner here with one out, try to get something going. And you said before, Harrell is having a good stretch right now, but that doesn't mean he's not placing balls where they shouldn't be. That's, a, a, as we have a walk, that is just one of the many, he, I think this is three or four full counts that we've had so far where the Falcons are getting just so close to getting a walk, but then Harrell will have this clutch shot or the Falcons will swing on something they shouldn't. And it's not getting in missed opportunity territory yet where they're frequently missing these issues, but right now it's what, what can they capitalize on when you're down three? And that is, the like you mentioned, a walk to Banjoff. So third walk of the game by Harrell. His 12th on the season. We have a meeting at the mound here for Ohio State. And right-hander warming up in the bullpen for the Buckeyes. Waiting to step into the batter's box is TJ Tackett. He singled his first time up. The only hit of the game for Bowling Green up to this point. He was out at second on a fielder's, fielder's choice in that top of the second. But the left-hander will get another crack at it here. So runner on first in the form of Lena Banjoff and one out here top of the fourth for Bowling Green. Falcons trailing the Buckeyes 3-0 here in Columbus. Lights on, still pretty overcast, no real sight of the sun. Clouds filling up the sky. I'm sure everyone's glad this was not the scene yesterday with the total solar eclipse. Similar darkness with the lights coming on, but yeah, you're right. Besides that, it's it looks like it's going to threaten to rain, but right now everything's staying nice and dry. Last time I checked, no rain in the forecast. Good news for us. Tackett's looked at the first two strikes. So here's a pickoff attempt at first. Bands off back in well enough time. So 0-2 to count on Tackett's. Chase Harrell. Still working here, top of the fourth. Another pickoff attempt. Outside of the walks, Harrell's been pretty good today. Like you mentioned, a lot of full counts for him, but he's limited the damage in the best way he can. Falcons only generating one hit so far. As this one misses just outside. Very close pitch. One and two the count. 
And Tackett's not the not the biggest batter on this Falcons team with an average of point two eight eight. But he still has he's got fourteen RBIs, two doubles. He can get the ball to the bat when it needs to happen. TJ Tackett fouls this one off to the left side. So we'll do it again at one and two. Wind slowed down considerably. It's not as violent as it was at the start. So the one-two pitch once again by Harold. This one pops straight up. Coming in for it will be Kazmar Mershon. Mershon, the second baseman, will call off. Kazmar, make the catch. So Mershon with both outs so far this inning. Krause and Tackett's popping out to the second baseman. Layden Banjoff still at first. Tyler Ross will step up to the plate. Ross grounded it into a fielder's choice, but reached first base his first time at the plate. He'll foul this one off behind us on the first pitch. And Ross was hot in the month of March. Two different Mac players of the week. And on top of that, one of the higher batting averages on the team, .359, 28 hits to 24 runs. And he started in 20 different games. So this is one of those key players for the Falcons, one of the bigger guys on the team also who might put a little bit more power behind the ball. And the runner off, Banjoff running to second. The throw in there, tried to avoid the tag with a swim move, but he's going to be called out. Good throw by Gravelin. Got Banjoff trying to steal. That'll end the inning. So Bowling Green once again gets a runner to first. Can advance it to second. They have not had a runner in scoring position yet. They trail Ohio State three nothing going into the bottom of the fourth. You are listening to Bowling Green Falcons baseball here on Falcon Radio. Is this the Krusty Krab? No, this is Falcon Radio. Is this the Krusty Krab? No, this is Falcon Radio. Is this the Krusty Krab? No, this is Falcon Radio 88.1 WBGU HD2 Bowling Green, Ohio. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Back here at Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium. Bowling Green trailing the Buckeyes. 3-0. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Connor Penrod going to stay in this one. And Rigo Ramos's day in line is officially done. Can you take us through that, Chaz? Yeah, that's right, Tyler. Through 2.2 innings pitched, he had 60 pitches, allowing three hits, three runs, which all three of those runs were earned. He had three walks, one strikeout, and he faced 13 different batters. So we saw him in that uh, bottom of the third just struggling, trying to get out of it, and then in the end ended up allowing three runs, and that's why the Buckeyes are up 3 nothing so far. First pitch by Penrod here. Misses inside. 1-0 count to start Mitchell Oakley. Penrod's 1-0 delivery in the dirt. So 2-0, and we found out during that break Western Michigan, the team behind Bowling Green in the standings, big victory today, beating Michigan 10-9. to So there's been questions about that Western Michigan team, about how real or not they are. All these top teams in the MAC haven't really faced off against each other yet. If that gives you any indication, 10-9 victory against Michigan, solid program, might be all you need. That Western Michigan team is real. Their, their offense is 
as much as we talk about Bowling Greens, theirs is neck and neck with the Falcons so far this season. And it is really interesting. You look at the scheduling and you have a top team in the two top teams in the MAC. You've got Bowling Green and Ohio team and Western Michigan, a Michigan team facing off against Ohio State, a Big Ten team from Ohio, kind of rivalry, and Michigan, Big Ten team. It's kind of interesting little schedule thing going on there. As full count now to Oakley, this one fouled off for the second pitch in a row. Two foul balls by Oakley. Penrod got behind. Mitchell Oakley worked his way back into this count. Penrod was the main high leverage guy for the Falcons last season. Ended the season with four wins. That led Bowling Green. Also had 18 appearances. Also led the Falcons. This one, Oakley thought about it, but it misses outside. He does not go. So Connor Penrod with a walk in his second batter faced. And you saw Penrod trying to get in a little bit of a rhythm, just trying to find it. And it looked like he did. You, He got the count completely full and just was not able to deliver on that last strike. And he started off the season really tough, but the past four outings he faced Akron Xavier twice in Northern Illinois, did not allow a run in five and a third innings pitched in those two. Gave up six hits, four strikeouts versus one walk. A walk here today against Ohio State. This one a fun attempt by Nick Jamarusti, but it goes foul. And Penrod didn't really get the chance to wake his arm up in that last inning. Just one pitch, one out. It was a very straightforward ending. And it was kind of fitting considering how Ramos was just getting to that point and was unable to kind of cash in on that. So Penrod finishing up that business and this, now getting a full This inning. one grounded a short side down to Ross. Ross back to first throw, not in time. So they get the runner at second. But... Jamaruski will reach first. That throw just short, like you said, like just just not enough speed behind it. And as a whole, that's a good play for the Falcons. The Falcons, they keep a man on first, but they get an out in return. It's a good little exchange, you could say, back and forth. So Hank Thomas will step up to man. We were talking about Hank Thomas, I think, is one of the best baseball names I've heard in a while. That just sounds like a baseball player. Thomas up to bat with a runner on first and one out. Looks at a first pitched ball. Thomas has also kind of worked his way into the starting lineup for the Buckeyes. His throw over to first. He's started the past four games against Purdue three times. Or started the past four games played, I should say, against Purdue three times and Nebraska. He did only play in that Friday game against the Cornhuskers, sat out the Saturday and Sunday contest. His two at-bats against Nebraska on Friday was two strikeouts. So far, Thomas has grounded out to second. This one is another throwover by Penrod. Back in safely is Jamarusti. 1-1 one, one count, one out, runner on first for Ohio State. This one going to be fouled back just to the left of us. 1-2 the count now. And Connor Penrod's trying to get back into form like he was last year. We've seen signs of it recently. We know what he can be. He was dominant last season. Had the best ERA on the team of a pitcher who pitched at least 10 innings. A three ERA this season. It's ballooned to a 6-17. Another throw over. Now he's set at the mound in the stretch. 1-2. The delivery from Penrod. Runner is off, but Penrod's going to hit Hank Thomas. So it'll be first and second regardless. Jamarusti was attempting to steal there, but the pitch ran up and in by Penrod. And that's just gut-wrenching for the Falcons, who honestly, if that... If that throw by Penrod is even remotely close to the strike zone, you might have enough time to get a throw to second base, get two outs and one, and the Falcons just unable to cash in on that opportunity. And and it just is—it's just not what you'd expect. It's not—it's just short of what you'd want. 
Halleck coming out to talk to the umpires. It appears he's going to review something. I think he's going to review some interference there, possibly thinking that Thomas leaned into that pitch. So we'll get a look at it on our monitor a little behind here. But that's, I believe, what Halleck is arguing. We'll see how close it was. As we're a few pitches behind up here in the booth. But we'll take a second to talk about this one. And if that's the case, that's a massive moment for BGSU. Like uh, what I was saying just before, this is a very big swing possession. It, either way it goes, it could be the matter of a run or two for either team. And that could be the difference between a first and second and a runner on the first. Still waiting to get to that moment in the game on the broadcast where we see this play, but... They are taking a second to look at this one, so it was a close call. Well, while we're waiting, you were talking right before about how... And it does seem like he, he leans back for that, but it seems like he does kind of flare that elbow out. So I think Halleck might be on to something there. He doesn't necessarily lean his shoulder into it, but that elbow flares out when that ball comes up and in. A little bit of a dodge move that, you watching it now, it's a dodge move where it's kind of an unnatural movement with the elbow going up that you wouldn't really expect from a backwards move. Yeah, that, that pitch was definitely up and in. It, it was definitely up and in, but I think Halleck's argument is that he could have turned away from that ball and avoided it rather than trying to kind of possibly lean in with that elbow. That could also just be a reactionary move of an instinct. We'll see how they view it. We're going to have... Our decision is just the second. They're going to talk with Ohio State coaches about it. Well, while we're getting a little bit of a second to breathe here, you mentioned, Tyler, before the name Hank Thomas being a good baseball name. The Falcons, a great baseball name against Tennessee, facing off against catcher Cannon Peebles. There's some great baseball names in the world of NCAA, that's for sure. See if any of those end up on those lists that are always put out of best baseball names. Those are always thrown around. Those are fun to see. So he is going to be called out. So we're going to get interference. Halleck on top of that one. The 2011 Mac Pitcher of the Year at Kent State. Looking at it from a pitcher's perspective, that always helps. So good challenge to get them to review that by Halleck. So instead of a hit-by-pitch... That will be a hitter's interference. And so that'll be the second out of the inning. And instead of being on second, Nick Jamarusti will go back to first. We'll see if he attempts to steal again. Does not this time. That's in there for a strike against Josh Stevenson, and you were talking about momentum. That right there could be a play that gets some momentum for the Falcons, turning point in this one possibly. And that's exactly what I was saying. Like, exactly. It's one of those moments that was fully momentum-based. You, you have a batter going to second base versus now you've got one runner on first, two outs instead of one, instead of two people on base. It's a completely different play you could go at now. This one drilled to right field. That's going to be down in front of Kraus going from first to third will be Jamarusti. And that's a single for Josh Stevenson. It's a single, but a double advancement. Now with a runner on third, the Buckeyes are threatening to tack on another run saying, you know, we might have interfered there, but we've still got the firepower to get some more runs in before the fourth ends. And I don't see any action up in that Bowling Green bullpen. So Halleck going to try to ride with Connor Penrod here. Still trying to sort out a high leverage reliever situation, find those key guys. As swing and a miss there by Trey Lipsy back to the top of the order for Ohio State. Looked like Stevenson was faking a steal there at first, did not commit. So whether that was a fake or a bad jump, we don't necessarily know. 
And you got to commend the Buckeyes for managing to kind of put the spotlight in the room back on themselves. You know, they, they had a moment where the Falcons could kind of take control and then immediately answered. And that's what good baseball teams do. They answer after tough moments in play. And that one in the dirt. Good stop by Cooper McKenzie behind the plate. One and one the count. Penrod working from the stretch throwback to first. Josh Stevenson kind of hesitating before he gets back to the bag. He's being aggressive with those leadoffs, not necessarily in terms of length, but kind of fidgety over there at first, trying to get the attention of Penrod. He'll stay put as this one misses up high. Two and one the count. And speaking strategy-wise, with the arm of Penrod, it's still, still being relatively fresh compared to Ramos's. You could expect a little bit of a mistake if you were to try to throw to first. And with that happening, you could get a runner making it home. And this one grounded off to the right side. Stevenson walking his first time at the plate and then advanced the second on a wild pitch before coming around to score in that bottom of the third. And we talked about at the bottom of the third with Ramos, was he able to close out? No, that was kind of a big issue in with everything set. Now Penrod's got the shot to end it here. Runner is off the second. This one going to be fouled off to the left side. So Stevenson finally made that move over at first base. We'll have to go back to first, though. Wait it out again. 2-2 two, two the count. Two outs. Bottom of the fourth. 3-0. The Buckeyes lead. Runners on first and third for Ohio State. You have to feel for Stevenson a little bit, who went back and forth after two foul balls in the bottom of the third. And Lipsy looks at a ball up high here. So full count, three and two, the count on Trey Lipsy. And runners will be off on this one. Three, two count, two outs. Stevenson goes. And it's going to be ball four outside. So he'll get the second regardless. And that will be the second walk of the inning issued by Connor Penrod. Now you got Kazmar coming up. Kazmar, four doubles, a triple, two home runs. And with 16 RBIs, he's got a chance with the bases loaded to do something special for this Buckeyes team. Still two out, but bases loaded. For Ohio State here, Henry Kazmar, like we mentioned up to bat. This one fouled off to start. And if you're a Falcon fan, that's what you want to see. You want to see those swings at pitches that might not be in the right positioning, might not be the smartest thing to swing at. But if you're the Buckeyes, it's got to be a little frustrating saying, you know what, just hang on a little bit longer. Maybe watch that pitch in a little bit more. This one can be lined out to left field. Banjoff going to his right. He'll slide and make the catch. What a phenomenal catch by Layden Banjoff in left field to end this one. That's a two or three run saver right there. Phenomenal play by Layden Banjoff. Get Connor Penrod and the Falcons out of a tough situation there. We'll head to the top of the fifth. Ohio State still leading 3 0. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Hey guys, I'm Sam Towns here with the men's BGSU basketball team, and here is my Falcon 4 favorite sports movies. Um, one, I'd probably go Love and Basketball, classic, uh, can't go too wrong with that one. Uh, my second one probably had to be Miracle, I don't really like hockey too much, but I think that's a good movie. Um, my third one would probably have to be Space Jams, uh, not the LeBron version, Michael Jordan version, the OG version. LeBron a little weak, but I love LeBron. Um, and the fourth one would probably have to be the new movie with uh, Will Smith, King Richard, about the Venus and Serena Williams. So, that's all. Cool. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Oh! I love this guy. What's your name? Back here in Columbus, Bowling Green trailing the Buckeyes 3-0. But we did ask that trivia question. Top of the third, 
We do have the answer now here. So it was Ohio State alumni Nick Swisher. He hit 245 home runs in his career. How many consecutive seasons of 20-plus home runs did Swisher have during his prime? Was it A6, B7, C8, D9? Chaz, do you have an answer? I do. See, when we talked about this before at the top of the third, I was thinking about it. I was going to go with seven. And then I thought, you know what? I'm on air. I might mess this up. I'm going to go six because you think about it. The field is named after him, and he's got to be, you know, he's got to have a donation made or something like that. So you know what? Six is it's a good amount, but it's not It's not nine. Nine, nine would feel a little bit more notable. Is it six? So first strike in there on Tyler Ross before we get to it. The answer is not six. Yeah, I'm going to give you a redemption guess. You get one more here. So it's either seven, eight, or nine. Six is not the correct answer. As Tyler Ross lost this one out to the right side. Camping under it, though, will be the right fielder, Oakley. He'll make the catch for the first out. So the answer is not six. Do you have a redemption guess? All right. Seven, eight, or nine. Nick Swisher, 245 home runs in his career. During his prime, how many consecutive home run seasons, 20-plus home run seasons, did he have? Tyler, is it going to be seven? This one chopped over to first before we get to that. That one bounced in foul territory before bouncing back in play. Rough spin off the turf. So Landon Rokey's going to ground out unassisted to first base. So now that that's out of the way, we finally get back to it. It is not. The answer is nine. Nick Swisher, nine consecutive seasons of 20-plus home runs. He did that across three different teams. He did that with Oakland. He did it with the Yankees. And he did it in his first season with the then Cleveland Indians, now Cleveland Guardians. I guess so, that's. Yeah, it's, it's – people forget how good Nick Swisher really was during his prime. That guy, when he was going right before some of the injuries later in his career, he knew how to match the ball. I guess that's why they name a field after you when it's all said and done. And, and people forget about that last season of that run, that first season with Cleveland. He was, if, if he's not on that team, Cleveland in the first season under Terry Francona probably don't make the wild card and don't get their first team stuff, if you want to call it postseason or not, before they lost to the Rays in that wild card. But he was a big part of beginning that Terry Francona era that went on to be legendary for Cleveland. So, Cooper McKenzie, the catcher up to bat. Looks at a couple of balls. 2 out of the count. McKenzie popped up. Two. The catcher, Gravelin, in the in his first at bat, top of the third. He'll finally look at a strike here. 2-1 the count. So, Chaz, you're, next time we're on a call, you're going to have to get your redemption guess back couple of misses here so far. You're going to have to just think about it. Not on air. Get your luck back. Tyler, I got to say, every time you ask me these questions, they give me nightmares. They give me genuine nightmares with how I get them right before, and then we get on air, and I just absolutely fumble. So looking at a ball, this one going to be found off behind us. So Cooper McKenzie now in a full count. Three, two, Harold, Chase Harold still out on the mound for Ohio State. Harold kind of cruise in the past few innings. This one going to be lined to center field. Stevenson going to come in. Nope. Make a little jump catch. Put some flair onto it. And that will end the inning as Bowling Green goes down 1-2-3 for the second, of, second consecutive inning. So we will go to the bottom of the fifth. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Ugh! I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? 
I'm Arielle Winter. If you're anything like me, your pets are not only your best friends, they're part of your family. American Humane, which has been rescuing animals like Cleo here for more than 100 years, has life-saving tips that can make a big difference in a disaster. When disaster strikes, you want to protect your whole family, including your pets. To help keep your family safe and help our best friends in their worst times, find tips at AmericanHumane.org. Back here in Columbus, Ohio at the beautiful Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium. And Connor Penrod's day is done. An effective outing for the right-hander. Can you take us through his final line, Chaz? Uh, yeah, so Connor Penrod, his day is done. But at the end of the day, he had 1.1 innings pitched with 26 total pitches. He allowed just one hit, no runs, no earned runs, two walks, one strikeout, and he faced seven batters. So not as much. He didn't allow any damage. But you could see towards the end of his time in this game that that arm was kind of getting there, kind of getting to the point where the, the ball was slowing down, path was getting a little bit predictable, and that caused Halleck to make the switch. And he does make a switch. He'll go to the bullpen for another right-hander, this time in the form of Logan Bell, the six-foot senior from Lisbon, Ohio, went to David Anderson High School. This is his fourth season with the Falcons, played his first season collegiately at Akron. This season does not have a decision in eight appearances. This will be his ninth, 7.04 ERA and seven and two-thirds innings pitch, nine strikeouts to five walks. He's given up five doubles and a home run, batters hitting 379 against him. And he was a two-way guy in high school, actually. So he made first team All-State in his final three seasons in high school. He batted over 400 and posted 185 ERA over his three seasons, last three seasons at David Anderson High School. But you, you hear those numbers initially, and they sound kind of high, but he's been effective in conference play. In conference play, he's pitched three games of the 4-9 ERA. Hasn't had the same luck out of conference as here's a bunt attempt on the first pitch. And that one will go foul. And you could attribute that conference play to the fact that, you know, Akron transfer see, maybe has seen the competition a little bit more. It's not like he went to a transfer to a completely different conference. And, you know, that facing the same competition year in and year out can do that. And this one can be popped up by Gravelin. Drifting out for is Sam Seidel. The shortstop retires the catcher for the first out of the inning. So one batter, one out, good start for Logan Bell. Pedarini at bat for the Buckeyes, and Pedarini has honestly been very solid. Three home runs tied for first, and in this situation, Buckeyes up somewhat comfortably, three runs, but we know with this Falcon offense, Three runs isn't necessarily the most comfortable. They can come back. They can storm. Big cut and a miss there by Panarini. So 1-1 one, one, the count on Tyler Panarini. And for this Falcons team, a little bit of the keys going on right now are you're down three. Your offense has not put up what you'd expect them to do. But you look at your pitching, and besides Ramos, Penrod did pretty good. As this one drifted out to right field, Krause initially going back on it, but he comes in, makes a kind of falling catch there. So slight misread possibly by Krause, but I was telling you, go back first before you come in. Easier to come in. Krause demonstrates that. Makes the catch for the second out of the inning. And now you have just another quick out. And that's what the Falcons need to do to sustain, you know, not sustain the lead, but, the, you know, sustain where they're at. And then offensively, just take that step up. This one in there for a strike against Joseph Mershon. Bowling Green looking for their second 1-2-3 inning against the Buckeyes in their first since they sent Ohio State down 1-2-3 to begin this game. Big swing and a miss there by Mershon. 0-2 the count. Mm. 
Logan Bell from the stretch. The pitch in the dirt, one and two. Logan Bell already is ninth game this season. Just seven games in last season. He's a guy. So this one popped up and fouled off. Doesn't really have too many control issues. Nine strikeouts, five walks this season. Just three walks. Just one walk last season in seven games. So it's not really the issue for him. It's more of just finding ways to get batters out, not letting them stick around in the counts. Misses down low in the dirt on this one. So had an example of this, had Mershon down 0-2. Last two pitches have missed in the dirt, so count now to even. The 2-2 pitch by Bell. This one lined hard, and that'll get through the infield pass. Ross, it'll go to the outfield. Big turn by Mershon at first base, but the throw in will keep him at first. So that'll be a two-out single for Joseph Mershon. And Mershon with another pretty big it feels like we've been saying his name a good amount today. He he was walked once already. And, you know, he's kind of got a knack right now for getting on base. And it feels like he's been a thorn in the side of the Falcons so far in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, a walk, a stolen base, and now a single. For Mershon, he'll stand at first. As Mitchell Oakley will look at a fastball outside for ball one. Oakley, the definition of an athlete, along with being in his fifth season at Ohio State, he lettered in baseball, basketball, and football in high school. So a former three-sport athlete. As he'll look at another ball here. So 2-0 count. Mershon on first, like we mentioned, has a stolen base. Nine stolen bases, top ten in the Big Ten, leads this team. Good stop there. On a grounder to first by T.J. Tackett. He'll go to first himself to end the inning. So we'll go to the top of the sixth. Bowling Green still looking to do some damage, get their first run across. Ohio State leads 3-0. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Hey, this is Deshaun Phillip with uh, BG men's basketball team. This is my Falcon 4. Uh, first one is NBA Youngboy Nevada. Second one, NBA Youngboy Make No Sense. Third one is Lucky Super Years. And the uh, fourth one is YG Tech. Uh, what's that song called? Not Enough. Actress Allison Sweeney for American Humane. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring and humane world for all of us. Back here on the campus of Ohio State University. Beautiful campus down here in Columbus, Ohio. Nathan Archer up to bat. Top of the order for Bowling Green. And Chaz, these Falcons trying to get something going. They have not had a base runner reach scoring possession yet. And that's right. And we, just, just because he's up right now, Nathan Archer, uncharacteristically quiet. And two at bats, no hits. No, anything really. And I think it was two straight pops for Archer. And a little uncharacteristic, he had two home runs against NIU. So a little bit colder now, but still a good chunk of game left to get some things going. Behind in the count one and two, and Nathan Archer on a seven-game hitting streak, batting 515 over the past seven games. He scored 13 times, driven in 10 runs, hitting four doubles in five home runs, but he'll go down swinging here. So Nathan Archer now 0 for 3 
so far today. Like you said, uncharacteristic outing from Archer so far. Goes down swinging for the first out. Sam Seidel riding a 36 game on the base streak dating back to last season will step up to the plate. And he did reach base already on a walk. So while that streak's still alive, definitely looking for more and looking to help his Falcons put up some points. Still looking for his first hit of the game. You go through, TJ Tackett's had a single, and that is the only hit so far for Bowling Green. This one going to be popped out towards center field, drifting back for it, and corralling it will be Stevenson. So two quick outs for the Falcons, trying to avoid going down 1-2-3 for the third inning in a row. And the Falcons just struggling to drive balls. That's been what's been the obvious issue is just they've been popping up these deep shots and you know if the wind's blowing a little bit harder they might make it over the fence but they're not that you kind of have to adjust a little bit and that's what the Buckeyes have been doing they've been driving and placing balls in spots where the Falcons are just not fast enough to reach so that's really fundamentally what it's been breaking down to offensively so DJ Newman up to bat checked his swing there check down says he did not go that one, though, in for a strike, one and one And I think it's safe to say, Chaz, that we haven't seen a Bowling Green batter barrel up a ball yet. We have not seen a barrel yet. All the contact has been soft contact. As this one looks like it just deflected off Gravelin's glove behind the plate. Kind of weird. Looks like Numa is going in, then going out. So it'll be a ball, two and one. Falcons just looking for that first real solid hit as Newman looks at the second strike. So two and two. And Newman, one of the more reliable hitters for this Falcons team, he designated hitter position he's at today, and for good reason. He can slam the ball when he needs to. And this one on the outside, Newman checks his swing once again. And they will say he does not go. So we'll get a full count here. As this one going to be fouled off. And Newman, another one, like you said, there's just been one hit so far this game for the Falcons. And because of that, you've got to think, desperation hasn't snuck in yet, but a hunger to get a actual base hit, not just a walk, which they've had a few of so far in this game, but you want a little bit more. You want a little bit more action, and considering you've had games where you've scored 17, 34, upwards of 10, you want, you, you, as a competitor, as an athlete, you want to score more. You want to put up more points. And Newman draws a walk there, and I don't think we really want full into him, but Ohio State's pitcher Logan Jones, he's been in for the past inning and a third now, came in in relief of Merrill, his second season at Ohio State. Jones with his seventh, eighth appearance of the season. He's a guy that struggled all year long in 18.56 ERA, but he's been solid so far. Uh, outside of that Newman walk, he's picked up where Harrell left off. As now two balls to start the count to Krause. So now we're starting to see him possibly slow down a little bit, lose that strike zone. And Jack Krause is a guy who could use a big hit right now. And that's been an advantage of the Buckeyes is Harrell had such a great beginning to this game. Four innings pitched and with 71 pitches only allowing one hit. He walked three batters, but at the end of the day, that's a very good line. Very solid outing. And, as... and so because of that, with Jones stepping in, you, 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 you're going to expect a little bit of a downturn in production. Is this the moment the Falcons step up? The Falcons make a move. So Newman on first, 2-1 count on Jack Krause. Krause looks at a ball here. Didn't really look like a pinch out, but Gravelin kind of jumped up like it. So 3-1 the count. Newman trying to become the first base runner for the Falcons to reach scoring position, and he will do so. Jack Krause walked. So back-to-back -back walks allowed by Jones. Now, mentioning scoring position, the Falcons, we talk about how good their offense is. They have not been held scoreless at all so far this year. They have scored 
at least a run in every single game, even against number eight ranked Tennessee at the time. And because of that, it's still early, but like you got to have that conversation a little bit. Like, is this this is one of those things? This is not stereotypical of this team. This team is a scoring hard, fast team. And it's, it's just kind of in an uncharacteristic mode right now. This is where you want to see them capitalize on this opportunity. Two outs, runner on first and second. Newman on second, Kraus on first. Layden Banjoff at the plate, looked at a ball to start it. Banjoff has struck out swinging and walked. He's also been caught stealing. Thought about going for that one. Called a ball, though, so ahead of the count, 2-0. Oh. We'll see how aggressive he is, whether he's going to wait for Jones to throw him a strike or whether he's going to have the green light. And we're going to have a meeting at the mound for Ohio State. Do have a right-hander warming up in the pen. And a couple guys getting loose on Bowling Green side. You have to expect that. With I, It's almost as if the tone has changed a little bit, and you'd expect that. That's how the game's going to work. But in the top of the sixth, you, you don't want – if you're the Buckeyes, you don't want – the Falcons to get comfortable. You're at home. You're at your home field. And this this team that scores a lot is only down three. You don't want them to get comfortable. You want Nathan Archer to be frustrated and show that frustration. You want Leighton Banjoff to, to miss wide open shots. And when you have a pitcher like Jones coming in and then kind of just forcing everything along and creating opportunities, one of these Falcons that are used to scoring is going to cash in on them. Jones has been solid his past two appearances. He'll stay in this one. Three innings pitched over the past two. Has not allowed a run or a hit. Struck out six and walked and walked one. He's already walked two here. So the pitch to Banjoff. 2-0. This one also called a ball. Didn't miss by much. So 3-0 the count. And we'll see how, once again, how aggressive Banjoff is. Taking on the 3-0 down the middle for a strike. And that's just the smart play. Even if it's a great shot down the middle, your chance to load the bases and advance things a little bit more are greater than if you take a shot and maybe risk popping something up. Big cut here. This one fouled just back. Just under it. Full count, 3-2, and two, two outs. So you'd expect to see Newman and Kraus running here on the pitch. This is the opportunity Falcons have been waiting for. Down 3 nothing. First and second. Two outs. 3-2 pitch. Lay and Banjo off. He'll take it for ball four. So now the base is loaded with two outs and TJ Tackett stepping up to the plate. And with Tackett, we said before, not the biggest hitter. Not, not the guy that you'd expect to make a big movement. But with how the play has been going, kind of advancing things, you're just in a very advantageous position. The only downside are the two outs. You look at that and you're kind of, you're optimistic, but you're still expecting Tackett's, who before, he's got 19 hits so far on the year, .288 batting average, 14 RBIs. That's not pedestrian. And Tackett's found the first one off to the left side. So Jones comes set from the stretch. Tackett's looks at one down and outside for a ball, 1-1. One, one. T.J. Tackett's, the only hit for Bowling Green so far, a single in the top of the second. Got out on a fielder's choice later that inning. Looks at another ball here. He's also popped out to second. 2-1 Two, the count on him. D.J. Newman at third, Jack Krause second, Lena Banjoff at first. The 2-1 pitch here. This one lined out to left field, fairly deep, still going back. This one's out of here. That's a grand slam for TJ Tackett's, and the Falcons move ahead 4-3. to three. What a shot by Tackett's. That is, you can clearly tell that Falcon fans have showed up to Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium because you can hear the roar. And with that, the Falcons take their first lead of the game, scoring their first points of the game. And Tackett gets his first home run of the year on a grand slam in enemy territory. Bowling Green had just one hit before that. 
A single by TJ Tackett's in the top of the second. He delivers with a grand slam over the 370 marker to left center field above the Nick Swisher Field Bill Davis Stadium lettering. The second grand slam hit by a Falcon this season after Gavin Ganun hit what was a game-winning grand slam against Akron on March 23rd. We'll see if the fate is the same here. A grand slam to put Bowling Green ahead 4-3 to three here in the top of the six. So we'll take a second here. We're going to have a pitching change for Ohio State. We'll step aside for a second get back to you to preview the new pitcher for the Buckeyes. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Don't go anywhere. NHL star Matt Martin for American Humane. I've had my fair share of bruises and injuries, but for many who put their lives on the line every day, it's not always the injuries you can see that hurt the most. Every single day, 184 veterans are diagnosed with post-traumatic stress. When medications and therapy don't help, professionally trained service dogs can. American Humane has created a free guide to help veterans obtain these life-saving animals. For help, please go to AmericanHumane.org. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting, a Teenager, Learning the Lingo. Jelly, Jelly Adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. I mean, talk about a game-changing hit. Still have a while to go here. Still nowhere near done here in Columbus top of the sixth but TJ Tackett's delivering a monster hit for Bowling Green both hits for the Falcons and Bowling Green now ahead four to three joined by my broadcast partner Chaz McNeil I'm Tyler Cavlitz and Chaz just hard to understate how big of a hit that is for this Bowling Green offense that was really struggling that's right, Tyler. And if this game was, if this game was a, like a Blues Clues episode, the word of the day that we've been using all game has been momentum. The momentum has gone back and forth. The Falcons not really having much. The Buckeyes taking it from them, and then the Falcons with Tackett's nailing a just getting over the fence to the left field and taking the lead away. As this one lying to second, that'll spell the end of the inning. But Bowling Green connects in a big way. They now lead 4-3 heading to the bottom of the sixth. You're listening to Bowling Green Falcons Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Hi, I'm Arielle Winter. If you're anything like me, your pets are not only your best friends, they're part of your family. American Humane, which has been rescuing animals like Cleo here for more than 100 years, has life-saving tips that can make a big difference in a disaster. When disaster strikes, you want to protect your whole family, including your pets. To help keep your family safe and help our best friends in their worst times, find tips at AmericanHumane.org. You have the right to know. The right to know about culture. The right to know about the economy. The right to know about technology and to know about sports. You have the right to know about education and politics and the weather. You have the right to know what's happening abroad and in your backyard. But above all else, you have the right to know that this right is under attack and we must work to protect it. Because in order to be free, we must be informed. Understand the threats. ProtectPressFreedom.org back here in Columbus, Ohio. Logan Bell going to stay in the game for Bowling Green. Now head 4-3 to three in the bottom of the sixth. Here in Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium on the campus of OSU. And Chaz, we did have Jones's day end after an inning and two-thirds. We had a new pitcher on that we couldn't get to in time before we went off the air. So wrap us up on exactly what went down there at the end of the inning. 
That's right, Tyler. Logan Jones, he finished up his inning with 1.2 innings pitched, 37 total pitches, allowing just one hit and four runs off of that TJ Tackett's grand slam. Four of those runs were all earned. Three walks, which allowed that grand slam to be possible. One strikeout, and he faced nine different batters. Then, at towards the very end of that inning, they brought in number 31, Jacob Morin. And Morin, on just two pitches, forced a line drive straight to second, ending the inning, sending it to the bottom of the sixth. And that was a bunt attempt. Now it's finally laid down here by Nick Jamaruski. And he almost gets on, but Falcons beat him by a good half step there. And that home run by Tackett's not only a grand slam the second by the Falcons this season, not only puts them ahead, but like you mentioned, the first home run of the season for TJ Tackett's, his first collegiate home run a grand slam against Ohio State in Columbus what a way to make your impact felt as a freshman and that's right and Tackett's we we brought we mentioned it he started 18 games so far this year and he's had 19 hits but just two doubles and nothing else everything else were just singles and that home run not only is just his first collegiate home run but that is a massive tie turner and, you know, that's something you can build on in next games. That's not just something that sticks in this game and that's it. That's a massive moment in his career. As Hank Thomas now up to the plate, fouls this one off, so the count will go to one and two. Thomas rounded out to second his first time up, and then bottom of the fourth, he initially looked like was hit by a pitch. It ended up being called a batter's interference. He... Stuck out that elbow as he was leaning back. Got called for that. So he was out on that. A one-two pitch here. A swing and a miss. Logan Bell got him with the fastball. First strikeout of the game for Bell. And that is just the second strikeout of the game for Bowling Green. First strikeout since Rigo Ramos got Matthew Gravelin in the, in the bottom of the first. And you can hear the Falcon faithful wake up a little bit. They've been quiet through the past five innings, then they seemingly have woken up, and they're not being quiet. This game is only two hours away from Bowling Green. A lot of fans decided to make the travel, and they're making their voices heard. So we do have an official correction. That Tackett's home run's not his first collegiately. It's his second. If you look it up, it's going to show first. That's because that Oakland game not yet finalized. He had one in that. The game that Bowling Green trails 18 to 17 in the seventh. That'll be finished on, I believe, May 1st is the date. So he that is technically his second collegiate home run. Still, what a way to make your impact felt. Bell behind 2-0 here. This one gonna be popped out to the left side, though. It's gonna get past Seidel, who dove for it. Josh Stevenson gonna be at first. Now they're gonna throw to first. Tackets won't be able to get the throw off in time. Heads up base running by Josh Stevenson. Got that bloop single pass side Dell. Banjoff picked it up. I think he fumbled with the ball over there in left field. Stevenson saw that, hesitated, decided to go for second. The throw came in to Tackett's at first. He couldn't get it out of the glove and throw to second before Stevenson dove head first in. Heads up base running there. High baseball IQ on that play. That was an amazing play by Stevenson. Stevenson going around first base and you the way everything worked out was he was just a step ahead that step ahead managed to give him just enough time and we'll see how they end up scoring that they're just going to score on a normal throw so they're not going to give anyone an error that'll just be a single and then he advanced to second on the throw so back to the top of the order for the Buckeyes, Trey Lipsy. I feel like we've said his name quite a bit today. Flew out to center his first time out, up, and then it doubled, and he was actually caught stealing going to third after that double. Would have been driven in by the Henry Kasmer double after that, but not out for the second out of the bottom of the third, and then he walked his last time out. 
in the bottom of the fourth. Ahead of the count here, 2-0 on Logan Bell. <coughs> Tyler Ross coming in to chat with Bell. He'll retreat back out to second base. Ross going to be playing on the edge of that infield turf out to the outfield. As we're going to have a half swing here by Lipsy. That one's going to be fouled off into the Ohio State dugout. So 2-1 the count. And that one ju that one hitting the meat of the bat. And if he commits to a full swing there, that might have been a gone ball. That was a good shot. But he just committed to the half swing. That one going foul. And big swing and a miss there. May have tipped it. Doesn't matter, though. 2-2 two -two the count. Two outs here, bottom of the sixth. Ohio State with a runner on second in the form of Josh Stevenson. Big swing and a miss there. Logan Bell got him swing. Two strikeouts in the inning. Bell gets out of it without allowing a run. Bowling Green maintains the 4 nothing lead. We'll head to the top of the... Ethan, and uh, Bowling Green Chaz still maintaining that advantage. So they'll have a chance to add on some more coming up when we get back. We'll be the bottom of the order with Landon Rokey, Cooper McKenzie, and then back to the top with Nathan Archer. You're listening to Falcon Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Crusty Crab? No, this is Falcon Radio. Is this the Crusty Crab? No, this is Falcon Radio. Is this the Crusty Crab? No, this is Falcon Radio 88.1 WBGU HD2 Bowling Green, Ohio. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds, and most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was... Living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone who... Had to be independent and take initiative. And that's how I handle every project I get. Discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. Brought to you by Grads of Life and the Ad Council. Back here in Columbus, Ohio, Bowling Green leading four to three and dad on to the tj tackett story which seems to keep getting cooler and cooler everything we mentioned a year ago today his dad posted on twitter that it was uncertain whether he would play the game of baseball again we're not sure the situation surrounding it whether it was a medical issue or something else but at one point in his career he wasn't sure if he would ever be on the diamond again and a year after that he hits a grand slam to give Bowling Green the lead against Ohio State and Columbus. That's a story that should be told as Landon Rokey starts off the inning with a single through the left side, gets the outfield grass. So Bowling Green now with a base runner to start the inning. And if you look at how they've been going so far this game, that's the first time so far they have started an inning with a base runner. And that just one of the only hits of the game so far for the Falcons as well. That's that's the only hit not by a man named TJ Tackett. And Roki continuing a, a pretty solid game so far. Hearing his name quite a lot. With And he's trying to get himself some more at bats too. He's been a guy that you know, we mentioned he started the second game on Sunday. He started here today trying to get more at-bats consistently. It's Cooper McKenzie now up to the plate. And that's a point in the season where you mentioned it right at the top of the game. We're about halfway through everything, and you're still sorting some things out. You want to get some guys a little bit more playing time. You want to work things out a little bit. And because of that, you're going to see guys like Roki step up and McKenzie come in. And those changes are going to be natural. And you you could get some sparks out of these guys. So McKenzie, 2-2 two -two count on the catcher. 
He swings and misses at this one, reached for it, went out of the zone. So he'll go down swinging. Throw down to first to try to get Roki is unsuccessful. He dives back in. But there is now one out in. We are back to the top of the order. We talked about it a few times so far. Nathan Archer been on a hot streak recently. Seven game hitting streak. Been mashing the ball. Nine extra base hits during that time. Four of them doubles. Five of them homers. 0 for 3 here today though. Trying to change that. Looks at a fastball here in for a strike. And more in, still in pitching for the Buckeyes. Big cut and a miss on a high fastball there by Nathan Archer. Just doesn't seem to be seeing the ball as well as he has been recently. And that's what we've been saying. Even, even when guys like Archer have uncharacteristic games, the Falcons will have people step up. Tackett's just now stepping up. And a swing and a miss by Nathan Archer on an off-speed pitch. So he'll go down swinging, took three cuts. Couldn't connect with any of them. So a tough day for Nathan Archer. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for the center fielder. Sam Seidel, though, will step up to the plate. Seidel, 0 for 2 on the day. He's lined out the short, flown out the center field. He has also walked, that walk coming in the top of the third. Seidel also dangerous once you get him on base. He led the entire Falcons team in stolen bases in 2023. Not one of those guys you really want to allow getting on base, which he's very good at. And this one outside by Moore. And Moore actually coming off his worst outing of the season. Four of his eight hits, three of his four runs, and three of his four extra base hits allowed this season. Came last game on Saturday against Nebraska. Was tacked for three runs in just two-thirds of an inning. That one in for a strike. So one and two, the count. Morin played last season at Tennessee Tech. A graduate student right-hander. Roki on first, two outs. Throw over. Roki dives back in. Warren appeared in 20 games for Tennessee Tech last season, holding a 3-0 record with a 3 ERA, 48 strikeouts, and an opponent 193 batting average in 45 innings pitched as this one a roped foul by Seidel to the right side. That one wrapping to the right. And if you're the Falcons, you have that massive play by Tackett that we keep mentioning, but Besides that, they're still kind of trying to get things going offensively. That's not going to be a game winner every single time. You have to maintain, and you have to you have to maintain and keep momentum building and keep building up runs. That's what this team has been good at. So don't expect this Falcons team to slow down. Another throw over there, back in successfully is Roki and Sun basically set now here in Columbus under the lights fully. Seidel thought about going for that one, holds back. That one misses to the outside. Two and two the count. Two outs, top of the seventh. Landon Roki stands on first base after a leadoff single. Sam Seidel waits the pitch. Roki's running. This one popped up, going towards the left. It will go out of play, so we'll do it again. Landon Roki on the season. One stolen base on one attempt. Was running there. We'll see if he does the same. 2-2 two -two count. Pitched by Moore and Roki's running. This one dribbled down right side but foul. Roki getting some cardio in now. Back-to-back -back fouls caused by Seidel. Causing Roki to run back and forth a little bit. Good job by Seidel to keep this at bat alive. He's very good at doing that. Another throw over to first. If we were in the MLB right now, there would be multiple violations with that throw over rule. 
It is not in college baseball, though, so still the traditional way of you can throw over as many times as you want as he does it again. Roki almost got caught that time. Gets back in time, though. Buckeyes clearly feeling a little bit threatened by Roki. He's already tried to run twice and is taking not even that substantial of a lead, but just the threat of him making that move is clearly causing some throws. Roki stays put. The pitch by Moore and misses outside, not by much. Gravelin unable to pitch frame it good enough, bringing back in for a strike. So full count, two outs. We will see Roki running on the pitch. Morin not walked a single batter yet today. Roki runs, swing and a miss by Sam Seidel. Morin took something off of it. Seidel whiffed at the off speed. So Bowling Green cannot bring across another run. They still lead though, four to three. We head to the bottom of the seventh. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Everybody buckle up. Bum, 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 bum. Buckle up. Let's go. Buckle up. Can we go to the store. Come on, buckle can we up. Get some ice cream? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody, everybody, buckle up. A lot goes on in the car, but you're in control. So only move when you hear the click that says they're buckled in. Never give up until they buckle up. Learn more at safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. When someone hears the words, you have cancer, it's one of the darkest moments in their life. Light the Night brings light to the darkness of cancer by uniting survivors, patients, and supporters in the cause to end cancer. We form a community of hope, raising funds in support of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. The discoveries made by LLS-supported research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. When we walk, cancer runs. Join the movement to end cancer today. Visit us at lightthenight.org. Pitching change here in Columbus for Bowling Green. Joined by my broadcast partner, Chaz McNeil. I'm Tyler Kavlitz and Chaz. Logan Bell is done for the day. Jacob Turner, the new man on the mound for Bowling Green. Can you run us through Logan Bell's final line? Yep, Logan Bell had two full innings pitched, 29 straight pitches, two hits allowed, but not a single run was done. There was no damage done in his tenure. That means no earned runs. He didn't even have a walk, and he had two strikeouts, which leads all the pitchers for the Falcons so far today, and he faced eight different batters, which is one more than Penrod. So Jacob Turner, the new man on the mound for Bowling Green. Henry Kazmar up to bat. 2-0 the count on him. Turner falling behind. Jacob Turner, sophomore out of St. Clair, Michigan. A righty standing at 5 foot 11. Misses outside once again. 3-0 the count. He's been kind of the new high leverage guy this season for Bowling Green. Trying to work his way into that role and solidify it. 1-2 and two on the season. He has a save as he fires in a strike there. 6.97 ERA in the season through 10 in a third innings pitch. This is his 11th appearance of the season. 12 strikeouts to 5 walks. This one fouled off to the left side. Turner has been very good of not walking batters. Hasn't walked a batter in the past 7 games. His last walk coming on March 2nd at Tennessee. Trying to avoid doing it here. This one fouled off again to the left side. and He's got some power behind that fastball. You can see that velocity increase from the last few we've seen of the pitchers in this game. The 3-2 pitch. That one got him swinging. And I think he tipped it off, so not done just yet. You can feel the heat coming off that ball. Hear the zip. So fouled it off. So we'll do it again at 3-2. and two. Went up with the fastball. See if he tries to change eye levels. Turner working quick. Goes with the fastball that time. He got him swinging. Jacob Turner 
strikes out Henry Casmer to start the bottom of the seventh. And Jacob Turner's a guy that we can consider an all-around athlete. On top of playing D1 baseball, he was a powerlifting state medalist and a two-time cross-country finals qualifier at St. Clair High School. That powerlifting can... You hear that, and then you see the fastball, and A and B connect. You build up that muscle, you're going to be able to fire that ball from your arm. 2-0 the count, so he's falling behind back-to-back -back batters in this outing. And Turner, in his freshman year, he he was pretty good. He had eight different different scoreless games, which is pretty solid for a freshman relief guy. Gets Granville in a swing through a fastball before he fouls one back. So 2-2 two, two the count. Looking for his second strikeout in a row to start this outing. Turner liking to work quick. Get some swing. Two strikeouts in two batters for Jacob Turner. Tyler Penarini is going to step in to try to extend the inning for Ohio State. And Turner, you said he's becoming a leverage, a good leverage guy for the Falcons, and that's 100% correct. In Against NIU on Saturday, he had his third multiple strikeout game of the year. This one dribbled a second. Tyler Ross going to field it. He's going to miss throw. Pass tack, it's at first. Penarini is going to make a large round Large turn around first. He'll retreat back to the bag, though. So, errant throw by Tyler Ross. Didn't look like he was going to get him regardless. It was a tough play he had to make. No harm, though, as Penarini will stick at first. We'll see what they score that as. They are going to say it is a single. So, no harm done by Tyler Ross. Nice Bon Jovi walk-up song there by Joseph Mershon. Pitch by Turner. This one lined to left field. Would have been interesting if it stayed fair. It does not, though. That one had the legs, I believe, if that one's fair. That was a hard, deep shot. That's the thing. The faster you throw it, the faster that's going to go off the bat. So Turner has to do a good job of not letting those banners barrel up the ball. Misses inside. One and one the count. Turner working from the set. From the stretch, I should say. Misses outside with that. Falls behind two and one. Joseph Mershon, one for two on the day. He has also walked. This one catches the outside corner. We're even at two and two. Two outs here, bottom of the seventh. Tyler Pedarini stands at first. Bowling Green leading Ohio State four to three here at Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. The 2-2 two -two pitch. This one lined over to short. Seidel camps under it, makes the catch. One. 2-3 goes down almost Ohio State as Pedarini got a single in there. But two strikeouts for Jacob Turner, and he gets the lineup to end the inning. Solid performance by Turner. We'll see if he stays in the game, but first Bowling Green will have a chance to do some more damage, extend their lead. You are listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Roxanne Watson is on a mission to have more people sign up as organ, eye, and tissue donors. What drives her? Roxanne received a heart transplant made possible by an organ donor. I decided that day to devote myself to signing up the most people in the United States. <laughs> That's my goal. Now she's a powerful force for good. What could you make possible as an organ, eye, and tissue donor? Leave behind the gift of life. Go to organdonor.gov. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. Did you ever ride your bike with a clothes pin and a baseball card? Or use a typewriter for a school paper? Then here's a timely alert. 
Americans born from 1945 to 1965 are five times more likely to have hepatitis C, which often has no symptoms, but is a leading cause of liver cancer. The good news? Treatments are available that can cure hepatitis C. Talk with your doctor about getting a blood test for hepatitis C. Know for sure. A message from the CDC. Back here in Columbus, Ohio, Bowling Green, that 4-3 to three lead, still holding that advantage. We now move to the top of the eighth. And Ohio State ended that last half inning against Bowling Green with three straight strikeouts swinging. Got McKenzie, Archer, and Seidel. And we do have another pitch and change. So Morin's day is done. Lead us through that final stat line once again, Chaz. So for Morin, for the Buckeyes, it was a pretty solid. 1.1 innings pitched. He had 21 pitches slung, only allowing one hit. Same for every other pitcher so far. Didn't allow a single run. None of those were earned, obviously, because none of them existed. Zero walks, and he had three strikeouts, which is a team high so far, and he faced five batters. So his replacement will be Zach Brown, the right-handed freshman, six foot five, two ten, from Santa Ana, California. Went to Villa Park High School, two and zero on the season, a four zero one ERA and twenty four and two thirds innings pitch. This will be his fourteenth appearance of the season. First pitch catches the outside corner against Newman. Newman today with just one run off of a walk. So that one but, dribbled foul to the left side. But two walks on the night. So he's made it on base a couple times, but not a hit yet from your designated hitter. And, you know, you break down a word, designated hitter, designated hitter usually means you're getting some hits. So. 0-2 pitch, misses outside there, actually goes to the backstop. So 1-2 and two the count. Zach Brown is a guy that can give you some length if you need it. He's pitched more than one inning in 10 of his 13 appearances this season. This one found off in the box by Newman. So we'll do it again at one and two. Yeah, it's really been that bottom of the lineup that's started to get something going for Bowling Green and Tackett's and Roki. Archer and Newman been quiet for the most part. Newman has drawn two walks as... That one almost hits him. As the move out of the way, almost lost his helmet. 2-2 two, two the count. So Newman drawn two walks. He's lined out to center field. Didn't advance anywhere past first. His first walk in the top of the sixth. He made it all the way to third. Fouls this one off. Good job of just reaching the bat out. To stay alive. Newman with 17 walks on the on the year, two of them today. That one misses outside, so count's gone full at three and two. And it feels like Newman's cooled down a little bit recently at the plate, not as dominant as he was early in the season. As I say that, lines went up the middle. That got passed Brown into the outfield grass. DJ Newman with his first hit of the game. And that's what you need. That's your spark. You were talking about the bigger names not getting anything done. And right there, DJ Newman being between Archer and Newman, being the first of the two to actually get a hit. And now back on first base, he's already got a run today off of that Tackett's grand slam. So in position to maybe bring home another one. Heard us talking about him not doing as well as he had at the start of the season. Said, watch this, got a single. So now Jack Krause up to bat. This one inside almost hit him. 1-0 the count. Now, obvious statements are usually obvious, but if you're the Falcons, you're up one, you want to grow that cushion. And you're reaching the part of your batting order that's Newman more running today. on the pitch. A throw down, not in time. DJ Newman with his eighth stolen base of the season. Back to that, though. Newman now on second. You're trying to push the envelope a little bit. Push as much as you can. You're up against the, probably the biggest team in the state. 
in terms of name recognition, you want to take them down. First time in a, over a decade. And this is how they're going to attempt to do it, is just hope everybody in the roster can provide. This one going to be fouled off to the left side by Jack Krause. So Newman, eighth stolen base on the season. Only been caught once. And just like that, still no outs and a runner in scoring position for Bowling Green. The 2 1 pitch to Kraus. This one outside. Count moves to 3 1. Kraus today, in two at bats, he's got one run and one walk. But he also was struck out once today. This one also misses, so Jack Krause draws a walk, his second straight walk drawn. Now we have runners on first and second. No one out, Bowling Green, perfect position to do some more damage. Landon Banjoff stepping to the plate. He's walked his past two at bat, struck out swinging in the top of the second. We're getting a similar feel to what happened over in the sixth where with Jones, he was kind of forced he was allowing some walks bases were starting to get loaded and Morin stopped that bleeding a bit but Falcons kind of maintaining what they were doing it's it, it, they haven't gone away from that they haven't gone away from that style they're looking a little bit more they're not swinging as much as they were to start and that adjustment is something that is so minuscule really when you think about it but it really does end up changing the game when you look at it the big difference between that run in the sixth and now is that happened with two outs. They don't have any right now as we have a meeting at the mound currently. Talking to Brown. Graveling the only other infielder out there. He'll go back behind the plate. So it'll be Layden Banjoff, the left fielder of this game, the utility man to kind of, kind of place him anywhere. He'll do the job for you. Infield playing in for Ohio State. Throwback to second, not a time. You have Thomas and Petterini. Few steps on that infield grass, really playing those corners. Got bunt being shown here. Pulls it back. It's going to be a double steal, and it's going to be executed perfectly. The fake bunt to the double steal for Bowling Green. And that's how you draw it up and execute it. That was almost like clockwork as both Falcons were moving in lockstep of each other, reaching base at the same time. And that'll be the second stolen base for Newman. First of the game for Kraus. Because that's a strike in there. One and one the count. So now Kraus up to six stolen bases on the season. Newman up to nine. Pitch here to Banjo off. This one misses outside. Two and one. Newman standing on third. Jack Kraus at second. Layden Banjo off. Ahead in the count. Two and one. Zach Brown trying to get control back. Limit this Bowling Green offense. This one chopped over to short. Kazmer is going to field it. Fired over to Thomas at first for the ground out. Bowling Green will have to stay put at second and third. That was a great fielding right there by Kazmar. That was monumental. If that if that ball's missed, that could be a run by the Falcons. That could even be two. And th with that hop, that was just a clutch play. And didn't really panic. Took his time, fielded it correctly, gave a look back to Newman at third. And then delivered a strike to first. And we're going to have an intentional walk here to TJ Tack. It's not really too surprising considering the damage that he's done so far. So Tack, it's intentionally walked. And still, that's huge. The bases are loaded yet again. And I'm, it doesn't get much easier after Tackett's. He hasn't had the day he's wanted, but Tyler Ross stepping up to the plate. Ross, big swing on the first pitch. It's going to be fouled behind him. He wanted all of that. 0-1 the count. 
Tyler Ross has had a breakout season. Batting 359 coming to this game with a 458 on base percentage and a 705 slugging percentage. The second best slugging percentage in the Mid-American Conference. Ross shows bunt. He lays it down. It's going to be fielded by Brown. They'll go to home. And they'll get the runner at home. Newman's out. So bases will stay loaded with two outs. Not exactly sure if that's the play I would call there. Either way, they'll still have another shot to get some runs in. And with Ross, that Ross's frame's pretty big, 6'2", 224 pounds. He can put some power behind that ball. And you're right, a little bit baffling, but there's a reason we're up here in the booth and not coaches. Unexpected play call there, but the pace is still loaded. Two outs. Landon Roki up the bat. 1-0 the count on Roki. Singled his last time up to bat. Roki fouls this one off to the left side. 1-1. One one. Roki looking for his second multi-hit game of the season. Had his first one in the second game on Sunday. His second straight start at third base. Coming today. Roki's going to foul this one off. Seems like they still have Tyler Ross up on the big screen out there. And right center field. Indeed, it is not Tyler Ross up to bat. It is Landon Roki. You know, Tyler, it is really interesting. There's only been four hits in this game so far. It feels like there's been much more action for the Falcons, but really it's been a walks. And then you had that intentional walk, that grand slam. The action's been spaced pretty well, making a pretty eventful, fun little Ohio battle going on here. Landon Roki chopped that one foul. Crowd getting into it. One, two, the count. Two outs. Top of the eighth. Bases loaded for Bowling Green. The pitch here, this one's driven out to right field. Moving over is Oakley, he'll settle under it. He'll make the catch. So Bowling Green threatens, but Ohio State does a great job of working their way out of it. Zach Brown doesn't waver, gets them out of the jam. Bowling Green still leads out four to three. We head to the bottom of the eighth. You are listening to Bowling Green Falcons Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Making sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Testing for radon is easy. Just call 866-730-GREEN. Make it green, green, green. A message from the US EPA. Actress Allison Sweeney for American Humane. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation, caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring and humane world for all of us. Jamaruski and Hank Thomas. And then we get the Josh Stevenson, if we get there, round out the bottom of the order. Do up for Ohio State here, bottom of the eighth. They're trying to come back from behind. Scored three in the bottom of the third to take the lead. They would hold that until the top of the sixth when TJ Tackett hit a grand slam, put Bowling Green ahead four to three. Joined by my broadcast partner here today, Chaz McNeil. I'm Tyler Cavlitz and Chaz, Jacob Turner staying in the game for another inning of work. That's right. Turner with one inning pitch so far today. He's only had 18 ball slung 
As this one's drilled to left field by Oakley. That's going to be fair. That'll go to the wall. Fielding it will be Banjoff. He'll throw it back in, but not before. Mitchell Oakley reaches second with a stand-up double. His first hit of the game. You can feel some life being breathed into the Buckeyes here. The fans for the Buckeyes who went a little quiet getting back into it. And they have the momentum after getting out of that jam in the top of the eighth. Crowd got into it then. They're staying in it now. They got that support behind them. And you just feel that momentum on their side as Nick Jamarusti steps into bat. Sam Rusty does not have a hit today. Looks at a strike there. He's lined out to left field. Grounded into a fielder's choice. And dribbled out to the pitcher. This one fouled off to the right side. So down to the count, 0-2. Interesting to note for the Falcons, Ramos... In the first two innings, the only Falcon to have runs on his name. As this one's hit out fairly deep to left field, Banjoff going to get under it for the easy out. Sounded good off the bat. Routine fly out, though, to left field. Staying at second will be Oakley. I almost thought the commentator's curse got to us there for a second is that ball was nailed deep left, but yet another clutch save by Banjoff, who seems to just be racking him up at this point. Had a great diving catch, diving, sliding, whatever you want to call it, earlier in the game. As that's a ball there to start the up bat to Thomas. Peyton Wilson warming up in the Bowling Green bullpen. as a safety net option. If Turner is gets in trouble, they can't get out of. As this one hits the dirt, going to third without a throw will be Oakley. That pitch went into the dirt. McKenzie tried to stop it, got off to his left. Oakley with a good read, advancing to third. We'll see how they score that. They are going to say it's a wild pitch on Jacob Turner. So second wild pitch of the game for the Falcons. Ramos had one early in the game. Now Turner with it in the bottom of the eighth. This pitch misses on the outside to Hank Thomas. Behind in the count is Turner, three and out. And you can really feel all that momentum on the Buckeye side right now. That's what I was just about to say. With the Falcons, they had their opportunity and just were unable to cash any points. And now it seems like it's the Buckeyes' turn to start threatening a little bit. There's a four-pitch walk by Jacob Turner to Hank Thomas. Been a lot of walks in this game. We talk about the as many hits as you would expect. A lot of walks so far between these two teams. But only seven total points to show for it. It hasn't been a high-scoring endeavor, something the Buckeyes are kind of used to. It's almost like the Falcons are playing their game right now. So Halleck can come out to the mound. We'll see if he makes a pitching change or if he's gonna stick with Turner. Peyton Wilson warming up in that pen. Runners on first and third. With just one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Whole infield meeting at the mound for Bowling Green. Trying to keep this advantage, not give it up to the Buckeyes. And Turner's going to stay in the game. Only one out to show so far in this bottom of the eighth. And Turner with two hits so far in his 1.1 innings. So... He's one hit away from tying Ramos with the most hits of any Falcon pitcher tonight. And Bowling Green's been good when holding a lead after the seventh inning, 12-2 and two this season. Trying to hold it here. One out, first and third for Ohio State. Pitch by Turner's in there for a strike. 
on Josh Stevenson, the nine hole hitter for Ohio State. Stevenson walked his first time up to bat, came around to score. He's had two singles since then. Grounds this one over the right side. Fielded by Tack. It's over to Seidel at second. Back to first. Not in time. Can it get to the back? Stevenson beats it. So Ohio State scores a run to tie the game at four apiece. Bowling Green trains it for an out. Two outs. Runner on at first. And it was the lesser of two evils you had to deal with in that situation. The run... The throw happened, the run went through, and now you have to deal with, you've got one inning left. You've got to stop the bleeding here. Some damage has been allowed. And because of that, that's another hit. And with Turner, the conversation's already been had. It looks like there might be one more pitcher put into this game for the Falcons. So getting out of this inning with minimal damage is key now for BGSU. Back to the top of the order with Train Lipsy. Turner delivers a strike, so... That was Mitchell Oakley coming around to score for Ohio State. Hank Thomas out at second. Stevenson standing on first. Throw over. Stevenson back in time. On the season, Josh Stevenson. Four stolen bases on four attempts. Of course, Stevenson played the past two seasons at LSU. Member of that 2023 World College World Series championship team. One in there for a ball, so one and one. Trey Lipsy was named a the Big Ten player to watch coming into last season. Didn't have the season he wanted. As now running to second, this one hit out deep left field though, and that's out of here. A two-run bomb by Trey Lipsy puts Ohio State back in the driver's seat. Six to four, the new lead. That one hit over the left center field wall above that 370 marker. That was a clutch shot. Almost in the exact same spot that Tackett's hit his. And that one putting two runs on the board, three in this inning now. And like I said before, you've got to stop this damage if you're the Falcons. Stevenson was running on the pitch. Didn't matter, though. Lipsy with the deep drive. Ohio State back ahead. They've put up a three spot in the bottom of the eighth. Still have an out to play with. Chance to do more damage. Henry Kazmar up the bat. Drills this over to second. It's going to get past the diving Tyler Ross. He's going to have to go out to the outfield to retrieve it. Kazmar won't advance to second, though. So Ross tried to dive for that, couldn't corral it, snuck past him. And we'll see, I would imagine they would probably score that as a single. We will see, though. Well, we mentioned before, we've said Lipsy's name a good amount today, and he hasn't really had much to show for it. But right there, that could be the dagger. Matthew Gravelin up to bat, looks at a ball. That is ruled a single for Kazmar. Gravelin, 1-0 count. Turner's pitch misses outside, so Jacob Turner was very good in that first inning, came in to pitch. Ohio State's found something on him. They've settled into him. Has not been nearly as effective this inning. Got himself into trouble early. Ohio State capitalized on it. They've put a three spot here in the bottom of the eighth. Misses outside once again does Turner. 3-0 count on Matthew Gravelin. OSU's catcher. Gravelin without a hit so far today. The only batter in the top seven to not have a hit yet. That's that one in there for a strike. 3-1, the new count. Falcons with two outs left to go to end this inning. This one lined over to third. That's going to get past Landon Roki. Advancing to second will be Henry Kazmart. And over to first with a single is Gravelin. Hard hit ball. Got past to Roki, hit him up over there at third. 
baseman number 42, Tyler Pedarini. Pedarini up to bat. Two hits so far on the night with two RBIs to show for it. And that will be rolled a single to the left side. McKenzie going to go out to talk with Turner. So this inning, you've had a double deleted off by Oakley. And then a fly out to left field before a walk, a fielder's choice. And then a two-run home run by Trey Lipsy driving in two runs before Henry Kazmar singled, followed up by a graveling single. And Turner will step off, look over to second. He'll get back on the mound. Lightly threatening a throw to two there. The pitch by Turner. This one misses outside to Tyler Pedarini. Pedarini today has popped out to third, doubled, lined out to right, and singled. Pedarini thinks about going for this one. We'll check down the third. He did not go. Too well to count. Ohio State trailed 4-3 coming to this inning. They've put up a three spot so far, threatening to do more damage. This one roped down the right side, but foul. 2-1 the count. That one could have been a scoring shot if it just fell fair. Connor Penrod was brought in earlier in this game. He's usually a high leverage guy in later innings. Jacob Turner the same. Turner staying in right now though. This one just misses for a ball. Isaiah Seidel warming up at the pen now for Bowling Green. Falcons trying not to pull that pin till the start of the ninth, but they might have to if this damage continues. This one grounded over to second. Tyler Ross fields it cleanly, goes over to Tackett's. Falcons finally get out of the inning. Not before, though. The Buckeyes jump on them for three. Ohio State now leading six to four, heading into the top of the ninth. Falcons going to fight to stay alive in this one. You are listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio. Radio. Don't go anywhere. I'm a wife, a sister, and a grandfather. I'm an office clerk. I'm a research analyst, dance fitness instructor, actor. I'm a copywriter. I'm a veteran. I have lupus, cerebral palsy. I'm blind. And I'm working in a job I love. I love. Because I was given a chance to contribute my skills and talents. To show that my disability is only one part of who I am. Who I am. Who I am. At work, it's what people can do that matters. For more information, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. I'm Surgeon General Jerome Adams. If you've recovered from COVID-19 confirmed by a positive test, you're in a special position to help us fight the virus. Your plasma has antibodies that may help others fight COVID. So please donate plasma now. You can literally help save lives. There are locations across the country that have safe ways for you to donate. Find a site to donate your plasma at coronavirus.gov. Produced by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services at taxpayer expense. Back here at Ohio State, Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis Stadium. Bowling Green going to fight to keep this one alive. They were leading 4-3 going into the bottom half of the eighth. Ohio State, though, jumped on Jacob Turner for two runs. They now lead 6-4, and we have a new pincher in for the Buckeyes as they try to close this one out. It'll be Justin Eckhart lead us through a little bit of his numbers, Chaz. Well, the Buckeyes are trotting out, trotting out Eckhart who has an ERA of 4.09. His win loss is one loss to no wins. He's got five doubles allowed on the year, but he is not allowed a run in his past two innings pitched. So a little bit of a good continuing here 
for the Buckeyes. Meanwhile, that means the night is done for Brown, who finished the night with one total inning pitched, slinging 28 pitches, allowing just one hit and not a run, but allowing two balls or two walks with six batters faced. And we will have a pinch hitter for Cooper McKenzie. It will be his fellow catcher, Garrett Wright. Right, the freshman catcher, six foot one ninety from Maslin, Ohio. This will be his nineteenth game, just his second game, not starting a three sixteen batting average, four fourteen on base, and four thirty nine sluggy percentage on the season. Five for twelve in the Northern Illinois series. He'll chop this one to the left side. That's gonna be fielded nicely by Pedarini at third, coming across to his left side. He'll make the throw to Thomas. Nice play for the out. One pitch, one out there for Justin Eckhart. Well, we talked about the fact that now you're at the last inning of the game. You're at the top of the order now. Archer, four at-bats, zero hits, and he struck out twice. If there's any time for Archer to kind of wake up a little bit from this small slump, it would be at the top of the ninth. And Archer just seems to not be seeing the ball as well. Check swing on that one, though. This one he drives into an open hole between Mershon and Thomas on the right side. That'll get to the outfield grass. First hit of the game for Nathan Archer. Move his hitting streak to eight games. Now you have what could be the tying run above the plate in Seidel, who Seidel kind of similar, not a hit yet. The top three Batters in the batting order didn't even have, don't even all have hits yet. Archer just got his. Newman got his, I believe, two innings ago. And Seidel looking for his first, so a little uncharacteristic. Seidel grounds at the second. Mershon can't handle it. Seidel going to get the first safely. So Bowling Green with first and second and just one out. That was a potential game-ending double play. Don't think it was fast enough, though. I think Archer would have gotten to second. But Mershon mishandled the ball, couldn't get a clean grip on it. So it'll be first and second with one out for the Falcons. And no better time for Newman to come out. And that will be an error there on Mershon. Newman with a large amount of home runs. He's got seven so far this year and three triples. A triple which would tie the game. Newman looks at a ball there by Eckhart. Newman swinging this one lined out to right field. Coming in, though, making the catch is Oakley. So Newman lines out to right, and Falcons being aggressive in these at-bats here in the top of the ninth, not wanting to see many pitches, trying to jump on it. And Falcons down to Kraus, and Kraus, who, if you were watching the NIU series, had that essentially game-winning home run in a very similar situation. And so he's been here before. He's one of the few players that you can actually say has been in this scenario. Kraus, big swing on the first pitch. Cuts through it for a strike. Jack Kraus, Mac Player of the Week on March 18th. A veteran for the Falcons, his fifth season at Bowling Green. Bowling Green down to their last out here, trailing 6-4. to four. Kraus, another cut and another miss, 0-2. Falcons are not hiding their strategy. They are going for gold with these slamming strikes Eck coming through. Eckhart trying to close it out for the Buckeyes. From the stretch, the pitch. This one popped over to the left side. Or we go out of the play. We'll do it again at 0-2. So Jack Kraus has struck out swinging, popped out to second, and walked his last two at-bats, trying to keep the game alive. For Bowling Green here, trailing six to four, top of the ninth. Runners on first and second, two outs. Justin Eckhart trying to close it for the Buckeyes. The pitch, swung on and missed. Eckhart closes it out for Ohio State. They complete the comeback. Bowling Green falls to OSU, six to four. So we'll take a quick break, get back with you to recap this one, wrap it up, and put a bow on it. You're listening to Bowling Green Baseball here on Falcon Radio.
Hey. Oh, d hey, Deb. I thought you were the radon test guys. The who test guys? Didn't you see the paper Sunday? The Surgeon General issued another lung cancer warning. Oh, like the cigarette warning? Yeah. They're saying we have to get our houses tested for radon. I don't smell any radon in my house. Oh, that's because radon is an odorless, colorless, tasteless gas that seeps into your house from underground. Does this story have a happy ending? Yeah. You'll be a lot happier once you get your house tested. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Everybody buckle. In falls to the Buckeyes, six to four. Bowling Green trailed for most of this contest, though it felt like in the later innings they had been commanding most of it. They, it was scoreless the first two innings. Ohio State took the 3-0 lead in the bottom of the third, and then Falcons came back roaring in later innings. Grand slam by T.J. Tackett's put them ahead four to three, and then. Ohio State got to uh, Jacob Turner in the bottom of the eighth. Turner ended up taking the loss. We'll get to his final line in a second. And the Falcons unable to come back at the end. Justin Eckhart taking the save for Ohio State. So, Chaz, run us through some of the numbers that stick out for you when looking at this game as a whole. I mean, you look at this game, and it, it really was close. It was one of those games where... It looked like it felt like there was a lot of action, but you look back on it, and the only runs scored by the Falcons were off of that Tackett's Grand Slam, and then two, back, not back to back, but two chunks of scoring by the Buckeyes. Besides that, everything's kind of similar, except for the fact that the Buckeyes have six more hits than the Falcons. Falcons top hitters could not keep up with with just unfortunate almost luck there errors wise Ohio State had one more they also had 10 runners stranded on base which was one more than the Falcons they had more at bats they had more doubles they tied in home runs it's very close it's just a matter of one swing play here one swing play there that kind of got everything to where we got it now so a couple of notes to go over with this loss this ends the Falcons longest winning streak of the season at four games. They also fall to 311 in non conference away games. This is their first loss in a two run game. And it, just the trends continue to show. This loss falls in a couple categories. First, Ohio State scored first. The Falcons are 3 and 8 now when they don't score first. They, were all, they also scored under five runs. They have not had a win this season when they score under five runs. Scoring has been the name of the game for them. They're 0-6 when they do that. They were also out hit by the Buckeyes, also winless when that happens. They're 0-9 with that. And this is just the third loss for them when leading after the seventh inning. They fall to 12-3 and in that category. So just... That one is uncharacteristic, but the rest of it falls in line with the loss of you see the things that they did not do well and they have not been successful when they don't do those things. So when you look at some of the individual numbers, who sticks out for you on both sides, Chaz? For the Buckeyes, I would have to say 
Honestly, I might go. I'm gonna go the boring route. I'm gonna go with both pitchers for this. I think for the Buckeyes, a four inning game by Harrell was 71 pitches, only allowing one hit, not a single score. He kind of set the tone for the game, slowed things down, put things more in the Buckeyes' style of play. And yes, he walked three different Falcon batters, but that was about it. And then I would also say that. On a similar level, you have Ramos, Rigo Ramos for the Falcons, who was the reason that three runs were scored at the very beginning of that matchup. And because of that, that set the tone for the Falcons where they were playing catch-up a little bit. And when you saw that catch-up get to them at the very end with batters slicing and trying to get these big hits, trying to get back into the game, where they weren't playing their style. They weren't able to get into their style that they're so used to doing, like you said, scoring more than five runs, maintaining this high output, this flurry of points, and that's really what set the tone. So that'll pretty much do it for us going over this. Well, when looking at both teams, Ohio State now moves to 14-14 and 14 overall, getting back to that 500 mark. They will now stay home against Moorhead State and then go back into conference play with three against Iowa. Meanwhile, Bowling Green falls to 15 and 11. They will actually return home on tomorrow against Purdue Fort Wayne, their first home game since March 24th. They will not, the last time they were home, they were only home for three games against Akron. They'll stay at Stellar Field for the next nine games. They'll face off against Purdue Fort Wayne, then three against Central Michigan, another non conference against Youngstown State, three against Ohio, and then close it out with a non conference against Dayton. So, that'll do it for us here. A couple thank yous before we go off air. First, to my broadcast partner, Chaz McNeil. Always fun calling games with you, sir. Then to our board operator back in the Cooleen Studios, Artie Abrego. Couldn't get on the air without you. Thank you. You always do a great job back operating that board. And also to our videographers uh, out here today, we had Drake Harlett taking some photos for us, Holden Ruck doing some video and Lacey Martinez will have the write-up of the game. You can find that on bgfalconmedia.com later tonight. And Kyle Edmund, the strategic information director at Bowling Green, helping us get through the game, give us some stats live during the game. Uh, and then Steve Iwanek, the Falcon Media Sports Director, for helping us figure out this whole situation of getting here. And Carl Smith, the Falcon Media Advisor, couldn't do anything if it weren't for Carl Smith, those two guys giving us the opportunities to travel to games like this. So that'll do it for us here tonight. Bowling Green falls to Ohio State 6-4 to four here at Nick Swisher Field at Bill Davis, State, Bill Davis Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Stay safe and have a good night, everybody.